Yttrium or Yttrium or Yttrium or Thunder. Dramatic. Hello and welcome to the Sadcast on Saturday, the twenty fifth of January, twenty fourteen. I'm your host Dan Train. Joining me today, some Thunder. Uh, Zachary Burgess. Yeah, lots of Thunder. The like and, that was uh, like two in several seconds. Also, Robert Kemp. I am full of tickly cough. I don't think you can be full of cough. Oh my, that, oh, wait, wait, no, hang on. I take that back because you can totally be full of running. <laughs> and, therefore, <laughs> and therefore, that phrase means absolutely nothing. <laughs> how, can, how can you be full of you running? Full of running? That's because that's what there's like football commentators say that all the time. He's like, oh, he's full of running. <laughs> <laughs> that's genius. That's, that's, that should be in Coleman Balls, I think. Uh, that's definitely a cock. It's full of running. Wow. Okay, that's, that's new on me. Oh, he's <laughs> running everywhere. He's running up and down the, running up and down the pitch. He's full of running. <laughs> He's made oh. of so much running right now. But I suppose, my, can my throat be full of tickly cough? <laughs> well, it depends. How, Is it whether consumed you can, by well, tickle? I mean, yeah, maybe. Depends how much, well, like, what proportion is counts as being full. Does people full say they're like full of cold, don't they? Those, yeah. those people say I'm full of cold, which doesn't really? make sense. But, <laughs> I've yeah. never heard that. Well, that just Seriously. means I'm... I, it means I'm, I'm stuffed can, up, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm, I'm stuffed with rhinovirus. It's more like full of snot. Yeah. But they say full of cold rather than full of snot for some reason. Good way, good way. Trying to be less disgusting. Do you say you're yes. full of cancer or tuberculosis? Or... <laughs> I mean, you probably could. <laughs> I'm full of AIDS. I'm full of running. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, I may be full of awkward coughing. And apparently, the sky may be full of noise. <laughs> <laughs> as well as rain, apparently. The sky is full of noise. And it's, light. So the computer may be full of breaking. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> this podcast may not happen or may happen in a weird way with cuts in it. Have you ever That's had a never happened to get killed before. by lightning? No, well, the only... in, in my house, everything gets killed by anything. No, but I mean permanently. <laughs> oh, no, not per. Well, maybe. It's like that last hard disk crash I had where it corrupted the, the, the file table. That yep. may have been because of a power thing. Uh, okay. I, 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 don't, I think I just wasn't there at the time, as I tend to leave my computer on when I'm going out. I had a computer get shocked through the, the old dial-up modem. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Man. Sc- screwed up the motherboard. I think this, I'm this is ages lucky. ago. Well, yeah, it would be. Yeah. It's a dial-up modem. Had a dial-up modem, yeah. <laughs> was it an internal modem? Yeah, it was. So that makes it slightly less ages ago, then. <laughs> if it was an internal modem, but oh. still dial-up. What was it? I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, can't remember. Well, you'd think an external one would, create, would be sort of a buffer. Yeah. Because the, the modem isn't directly in contact with... <laughs> the computer and has its own circuit boards to fry yeah you'd think i can't remember yeah i I reckon it must have been that must have been after my first foray into modems yeah how do you know it was through the modem and not through the power supply then well okay honestly i don't but that's my theory (laughs) great because if it went through the power supply i don't know just because phone lines are crap (laughs) that is sort of true yeah that is probably And and everyone always talks about how like if people get electrocuted in thunderstorms because of phone lines, not just because of power socket. Yeah, I thought it was kind of. I think at the time it was kind of common, actually, that like if your lightning happened, that your phone line could get a real bad spike. It's probably also because most in inside a town, phone line like phone lines are more often above ground, and electricity cables are more often above, below ground. Mm. That's true. They're more likely to get hit. <laughs> So yeah, apologies in advance if I blow out some eardrums with my awkward throat noises. Well, you're you're not doing too bad so far. I mean, Zach, no, you I'm doing I'm doing all right. Well, it's because I've I've just had a Rob's cough drinking. sweet, which <laughs> should be okay. Yeah, I seem a lot I'm better. I, I, no, <laughs> well, how <laughs> if that helps? Does alcohol like make your throat drunk? Yeah, it doesn't dumb it enough that it <laughs> probably it. probably doesn't hurt. Actually. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the word dumbing your throat. It's like, or is that? No, 
I guess in the context of like not being able to make a noise, as in like. Oh, you're right, dumb. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you're, what were you using it as a context of? Use it to. Well, because it's reduce the intelligence for dumbing the down something, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so I'm dumbing down my tickly feeling, therefore. Oh, you mean dulling, <laughs> do you? Not dumbing. Dulling I mean, or maybe. numbing? But, but dulling's on its own. <laughs> dumbing is is for dumbing down, which is the sort of the same as dulling. No, dumbing down means like reduce intelligence. But if you're dull, to, you are you thick, can, though. Yeah. Right? So there is a kind of a closeness there in the words, maybe. Like, I don't think, this is another case of Rob's cre- like. Yeah, there's another word them. that's very similar to another word, and therefore Rob just assumes that that word applies in all contexts of the other. Uh, words. Yeah, no, hold on, because you can you can dumb down. Your, a personality trait. You can sort of say, "Oh, he's a." Can, no, can, 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 can you can you dumb down your rage on this? Or... <laughs> no, I wouldn't have said that was ever a phrase that I would have used ever. I'm sure. I think it. dumbing down. I, I don't say I've used it, but no, I'm sure I've heard it like all over the place. All over the place. Okay. Okay. Let's get dumb. Well, let's get dumbed down. <laughs> At the very least, I've said it on this podcast a lot, and no one has pulled me up on it before. <laughs> well, maybe we just waste what you were saying, dulling or you don't or dull down though. Like, no. what can I say with dirt down? <laughs> Let's yeah. It's There's a song like called BBC "The Dumbing Science Down of Love," please, isn't it? Is that? <laughs> That's a song though. They can say whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> There's a song called that. Yeah, it's Imogen Heat. Oh no, it's free dumbing, free. Sorry. The dumbing down of love. <laughs> That's mysterious. Yeah, but isn't that saying love makes you dumber? It's like is it love is causing the dumbing. <laughs> we have to look this shit out there. <laughs> I think I'm right. But it sounds like... like, But just from that title, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like love is some kind of intellectual concept that's, that's really intelligent or something, and it's being dumbed down. <laughs> Which in itself is done. Rob is not right. <laughs> well, not <because laughs> of course he's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, but hang on, but it's got, it covers a lot of areas here. Nonetheless, okay. the term dumbing down is subjective because what a person considers as dumbed down cultural artifact usually depends on the taste. Yes, but, yeah, but that's throw that's as a taste cultural artifact. <laughs> <laughs> Although it, can, it, does t- it does have taste somewhere at the top. I think it's gone beyond its initial reason now. It certainly has in your usage. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to convey some subject matter in simple terms, I don't know. Dial it yeah. back. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you dialing? Are you? Uh, yeah. So doing... hang on. Um... <laughs> well, look at look at, look at the throat. other look at the synonyms there and try and compare those to your throat. I'm going to trivialise my throat tickling. <laughs> ah, but if Actually, it's trivial, okay. then I can deal with it more. Yeah, yeah that, that but... might be okay. Trivializing it or making it a trivial issue, maybe that could be okay. Well, I'm going to simplify my. It's like, does milk simplify my throat tickling? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> well, it may do if it's simpler. It's easier to do. It's sort of, cl- sort of close to being an almost. It's like, oh. I mean, that's just the same thing. What we're talking about. It's like it's almost a way you could use that word. But I don't think it's very right. <laughs> Okay, it's close I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's in usage. Let's put it this way. It may be wrong, but well, it's one of those things that's in, in usage. usage. <laughs> You're making it in usage. I'm going to use it now. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Ne- neologisms with the with the salica. or no, not really, because they're not new words. They're just repurposed um, existing old phrases. words that are close to close enough. Then retrologisms. <laughs> retrologisms. <laughs> There you go. There's the deal. Uh, I don't think it's. This is. I think you're making a bigger deal of this than it normally is. I'm, I've heard it. Uh, it's not just me. Oh, look at the Urban Dictionary. Oh no, I'm looking at Urban Dictionary's version of this. This is going to be. That's going to be particularly filthy. I'm sure. It okay. Is. So, um, video games. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have any news? Uh, um, not really. What do you mean, not really? There's quite a bit this week. Was there? Like what? Nintendo sales Nintendo. figures. No. That's not interesting. Oh, come on. It kind of is. 
It's like it's the first time Ninty's made an operating loss for a while, and it's a biggie. No, it's not the first time. They they've lost money like three years in a row or something, isn't that right? Wasn't that what the big thing was? And <sighs> no, Iwata's maybe. worried about his job. And even so, it's two hundred mil this time. Yeah, that's a, that's a hefty figure. All I remember from this new story, apart from the actual story that I read, so, like in, in the surrounding area of this new story, I just saw a comment that someone where someone just said, "If you just release Smash Brothers, I'll buy your damn Wii U." <laughs> and it's like, "Yep, that's pretty much true." <laughs> yeah, that was the main comment I saw was people waiting for Mario Kart and Smash Brothers. Because mm. that was the other, that was sort of the other half of that new story, I guess, where it's like we scaled back our Wii U sales. Or we predicted this many, and we only sold like fuck all. <laughs> but but worse, I mean, there's, so effect. there's a price cut this week as well. It's like 180 at Argos and Amazon now for the premium one with Nintendo Land. Uh, but is that permanent? Uh, it, or is it well, just a sale? Because sales aren't. I don't think it is just a sale. Um, hmm. It's hard to say though. But yeah, that's pretty good, right? Well, not good. Not good for Nintendo. <laughs> But good, that's like it, it, the launch price was like two ninety or something. They will have sold less Wii U's than the Xbox One and PS4 over the course of the last year. Mm. Wow, that's kind of rough. Just pat Smash Brothers, do it. <laughs> They're gonna put out games we care about. Well, games anyone cares about. Well, you're a gamer, just saying that. The problem isn't Iwata and his business strategy necessarily. It's more with Miyamoto and and that that there aren't any new you can, ideas. You can't really blame that on Miyamoto any longer. Well, he is in charge of all game gone. development, right? Well, he's like still barely. He's like a a leader figure that doesn't necessarily have as much direct control as he used to. Oh no, no, he doesn't. He doesn't necessarily get involved with the game creation per se, but he still has to. He's a strategy strategy front. I yeah, but he's meant to be now. He nowadays he's meant to be like training up the next generation or whatever, and basically like trying to let other people have ideas mm. <laughs> or whatever the situation actually is. Well, I hope they do. <laughs> well, maybe he's training them by making Link to the Past again. Well, that probably <laughs> you know, was one of them. <laughs> it was one of the best games of last year. Apparently. Well, it's because they, they that was like the first time in ages in Zelda where they actually almost done something that's almost different, only not quite. It's like yeah. it's the same game, apart from we've we've changed like how you get the weapons so you can do the gun dungeons in any order. And it's like, oh, that's almost innovative, only not really, because <laughs> it's like a sub part of this game well, you've made before. Yeah, and you could say that perhaps removes some of the, you know, some of what made Zelda good, like using your items to solve certain problems. Well, it's because they can't have item based still... solutions anymore, can they? Yeah, well, inside the dungeons they can. Because it's like at the start of the dungeon, there'll be just a door that you can't open unless you have the right item. It's just that now yeah, sure, you can get sure. any item whenever you want. So you mm. can do whatever dungeon you want in any order. <laughs> I don't know. There's always something cool about that that oh moment in Zelda when you first get an item and then you figure out what it's good for. And it's uh... Was that really cool? Yeah. It's, like always you... is. it's always nice to be sort of like to discover something new and then to be... Uh, then to have a, have a find a use for it, and for you to sort of discover it in a way that's yeah, but you don't not f- so like not like text on screen. It's just like oh, just do this. Yeah, but you don't really find a use for it. You come into a room where there's no way for you to get out. You get the item, and then you see the thing that you have to hit with the item to let you out. Yeah, but still, that's a sort of <laughs> self discovery as opposed to it saying, "Do this, please." Well, or here's what the boomerang is really good for. I'm giving you going through a very sort of cut aside tutorial. Uh, well, I don't know, because even then, with like, if you think about the boomerang, it's like, it, they'll pop up a text box that'll say, like, the boomerang locks on when you're doing this thing, and it pops up this icon when it's locked onto a thing, and then you just wave your view around the room and lock onto things. It's like, that's... That's, that's more how to use, not what it's good for. Though. It's like, <laughs> it's a different thing. What is a boomerang it's like, good it's... for apart from hitting things that it's locked onto? <laughs> Or we just pick a really bad example or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah maybe. Because they changed the boot. Uh, which one was it? Well, I guess they do change like, they change the, the mechanics extra occasionally, functions don't they? of the yeah. boomerang. It's like, sometimes it's windy and sometimes it's uh, windy. I guess that's really the only other thing that the boomerang has been, is windy or not windy. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I, I think Nintendo always does that in a really good way. You know, it's not like 
you're not spoon fed what's well no they don't that's 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 what i'm trying to say is i like that feeling of discovering something and then sort of on my own working out what to do with it not being outright told what to do with it and they've always been very good at that and with this new system they don't have that anymore and it's like sure they've brought back all the same objects but they brought back all the same objects from before and then it's kind of... Well, it's just the same thing apart from... Relying on the fact you know what they do. No, it's like you get to the entrance to a dungeon and then it's like this door won't open unless you can hit these two things and for which you need a boomerang and you just have to have the boomerang in order to be able to do that. It's the same thing as coming into a room and getting the boomerang and then having to hit the things to get out. Oh, but you're making the assumption that they that you could work that out. I don't know. It's like because you've just got the item. Or maybe well actually there's a sort of impetus to sort of say, oh hey, okay, now there's probably going to be a use for this. Yeah, I guess. Whereas if you just walk into a random you can't do anything else. Yeah, when you walk into a random room into which you may not have brought the right equipment or something, you sit there scratching your head going, what do I do? Well we haven't played this game, so maybe there is just a A picture of a boomerang or something. Maybe there's just a fucking giant icon that pops up. Yeah. Or a text box that says, Hey, you you can't do this unless you have the boomerang. I thought it was more that that game did things by like showing you certain elements, not by certain items. Like, oh hey, you're gonna need something with fire for this or maybe. We haven't played it still. I haven't played it. I guess I'm the only one who can play it. Mm. I still haven't bought it. That's a story for later. About Is previous it? issues. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what, what else is in news? Oh, but Nintendo come on. didn't make any money. That's Nintendo it. didn't make money, but I mean, what are they going to do? <laughs> Release Smash Brothers. Yeah, but does Smash Brothers <laughs> really make, like, does Smash Brothers really sell in comparison to, like, you know, Mario? I mean, I know it's a, it's a, it's a hardcore gamers game in, as far, as far as Nintendo is. Do you see what I mean? It's the most hardcore of Nintendo games because they're not really, they're quite mainstream, but in a really well-made way that everyone loves. But Smash Brothers is more hardcore well, than and, most, right? <laughs> go and search and see how many Smash Brothers brawls sold. Okay, I shall. Yes, boss. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you, Dan. I was talking to Rob. <laughs> okay. Do they? Where do you find the information for like what's sold? <laughs> Generic Google search. Yep. That's, that's Rob's plan. And then you go to the. Well, it'll be in there, won't it? Yeah, what's up in there? VG Charts. Oh, shit. I named a website. Oh, no. Probably should have done that. <laughs> I don't want to visit your sponsor. Sorry, VG. Sales. It's right there at the top. 12 11, million. 11 million. <laughs> that's quite a lot so if we assume that like that's like four times you, the number of Wii U's they sold this year yeah but if you assume that like conservatively maybe like I don't know half of those people are going to <laughs> go into the next Smash Brothers maybe less than that even in fact well if a quarter of those people get into the new Smash Brothers that's still twice as many Wii U's as they've already sold <laughs> that's yeah. A, yeah okay fair enough that, that, okay, and that's making that the assumption that they haven't already bought a Wii U on the basis well, that true. they know Smash Brothers is coming out but considering the number of times you see people saying yeah that's true I'm waiting for the games or whatever if, even if it's not Smash Brothers so what do you think has cost them on this one if you know what I mean what's the what could they have done differently to avoid this? I mean, some say that their marketing strategy has led to pretty big confusion well, between yeah. like the casual market because the casual market just sees it as, well, saw it as, oh, hey, look, it's a, it's a Wii. Oh, but there's this tablet thing for yeah. the Wii. For the Wii. Not and it's a double, it a whole... double whammy mistake as well because they did the exact same fucking thing with the DS. It's like, yeah. oh, it's the same thing, but 3D now. It's like, I've already no, got one of those. Yeah, it's a new it's console. <laughs> it's the exact same thing, and they did it twice. <laughs> it's like it's hard to. It's partly because the names are so similar. Like I don't know, you, you, there's sort of the same problem, I suppose, when you say PlayStation. Like some people would just say, "Oh, it's a PlayStation." No, no, no. This is a PlayStation Four. <laughs> well, that's that. not that and complex, that, though, is it? That's, I mean, no, no, no. But you know, you can see, you can see. <laughs> Exactly, but I'm saying that that's that's the limit at which it should be happening. When it's a number, it makes sense. When it's a random extra letter, maybe that doesn't make sense as much. Yeah. Well, it's Nez and Snez. Well, they had a letter there. <laughs> that well, no, but that, they, they, that was always a uh, a shortening that we made as people. 
like to make it easier to say, it was always called the Nintendo Entertainment System or the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And Super mm-hmm. was sufficient to distinguish it. I guess. Yeah. Like a number. Super. Um, that could and, easily and, and the Xbox like has a, never had... If you think about it these days, that could easily have been a different skew of the same thing, the Super version, like the Slim version or whatever. You know it wasn't I mean? slim. It was like. I know, but I'm just whatever. saying. I'm. I'm just saying. Oh, you, you mean the other it, way? It you almost sounds just like a bit of fancy mess. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's personally my my reasoning behind why I think Ninty have done it is because they sort of threw aside their core fan base with Wii. I think, like, yeah. just because of the it's way they off. marketed it, the way they targeted it, it put people off what the direction Ninty were taking. The hardcore initially. wanted, but yeah, maybe initially, but the hardcore like their powerful machines. They like their um, yeah, having the having top end tech. Hardcore like powerful machines. They'd had the 64 in the game. <laughs> the 60, well, the 64 was comparably more powerful than the PlayStation. Yeah. It could do more effects, but couldn't handle as many polygons, admittedly. Not by a long shot. Yeah. Um, but it was 64-bit, and so that was enough for some people <laughs> at the time. The GameCube, okay, yeah, sure. It's it's actually it's underpowered compared to an Xbox, but in some ways it was more powerful than a PS2. Again, all very much of a muchness. They're better and worse in different ways. The Wii was them saying... Fuck you, power <laughs> hugs. <laughs> we're, we're taking a step back. And uh, that may have put off some of the hardcore. And then the games they released went bad, but I'm not sure there was enough there to say, I really got much faith in Nintendo for the next round. So then the Wii U comes out and it's like, well, this is the same as the Xbox and PS3 we've had for many years now in terms of power. You just, you're just playing catch up now. And without any games anyone wanted for it, faith gone. <laughs> Yeah, they kind of mucked it up because, like, I get, I, I kind of think it is the right approach for Nintendo to not, uh, you know, try and compete on the power. Maybe no, they don't necessarily but, need it, but no, it depends I don't what think you get into. To. It's like the problem is, is that then they're selling an expensive system with an expensive games that, uh, like, and you have to kind of only want Nintendo first party stuff, really. Yeah, and that's like when you're has buying to a PS it as well. Like, exactly, like, when like you're the buying Wii, a PS4, it made some sense, right? But with that tablet thing, it's like, does this justify this whole thing? Because no, you can I'm see how that does. Wiimote did justify that whole console. To, you know, not to us, maybe, but to, to enough people. Yeah. But That's what I mean, the tablet, tablet isn't enough of a... doesn't add enough to that we haven't already seen before. Exactly. And I haven't even seen them do much of the, the uh, asymmetrical... Mo- local multiplier that they were touting as like one of the main reasons like they did that nintendo land thing but i haven't seen much from them since you'd think they'd do some big game where that was you know like like, like D D or whatever <coughs> where you know like like penny arcade say with the where the dm has got the well, they've got to be making a new a new mario party which will use that shortly yeah yeah but oh, well, they're making a new wii party save you. i think i think, well, I, I, think <laughs> I heard somewhere which which is the, has the that other. actually replaced Mario Party sort on, on, no. the, on the console because now Mario Party's on the fucking 3DS and it's like what the shit <laughs> but no it, had, it, never, it was never designed to replace it but it was designed to sort of be a parallel thing they were buying into the whole Wii brand and if the Mario brand didn't work for you kind of thing <laughs> right and also it was a kind of an inferior version anyway well yeah no, um, no. wasn't as good um, so apparently they're making another one <laughs> great I don't know if it's even the same people. I don't know if it's like a different team at Ninty trying to do that thing. Because do Ninty actually own Mario Party? If you well, know what I mean? Because it's, it's always been a different dev, hasn't it? Working on those. It's not still Hudson or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it probably is Hudson. But then what are Hudson now? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get the impression some of these software houses like Hudson and Camelot and stuff were pretty much they were like second party almost like they were they didn't really do much for anyone that w- weren't nintendo did they well hudson have been known to put out bomberman games <laughs> that's true <laughs> well they might have they they being japanese companies they might be into some ridiculous shit in J- japan like plinko or horse racing or something something <laughs> that we never see <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> horse racing stuff is insane they would bring that. That would save the Wii U. They just put insane Japanese. <laughs> Don't know if it there. would. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. It's take what it, the thing for me is. It's taken them like how long has it been out now? A year and a bit to get 
a good killer app, and the killer app for me is Mario, like mm. Mario Land. Yeah. Whatever that's it right. That one. Oh, Mario World. Sorry, Super Mario Three D World. It's like that's that that would be the at the moment if I was to get one. That would be the reason for me to want one. And it's like, and it's taken them a year to get to that point where I think, yeah, all right, cool. You've got something I want for it. I've actually um, got there. And then Sonic Lost World would just come across. <laughs> I've got I that, mean, Pikmin that. 3 is fine, but it's just yeah, more Pikmin. Pikmin so, yeah. yeah. Mario yeah, Kart Pikmin. will be good, but I'm not sure how fast I, or how excited we'd all be for another Mario Kart. Um, I don't know. I haven't played one for a while because I didn't think any of them were good since Double Dash, really. So, um, I mean, they were fine. They're all good. Yeah, yeah, they're good, but they didn't really attract me in the same way. But you never know. They might. Oh God damn it! Just bring back F Zero or something. Yeah, this... I don't know. <laughs> bring back Nintendo's slightly sci-fi division of like Metroid and F Zero. Yeah. <laughs> well, they already found out um, Metroid to great success in two generations ago. So yeah. They now, well, the they same. sort of they and played... then fuck that up immediately. Well, they found out to somebody else, didn't they? Yeah, exactly. They found out to someone two generations ago, and it was great. And then they went, let's do that again. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but it was a different series. And now Retro, who, who you know, were behind the Metroid Prime games, now work on the Donkey Kong Country games. Mm. So. Mm. They're going to have to get back into, into Metroid soon, though, surely. I mean, I've got to be like... honest, I've always kind of wanted to play the Donkey Kong Country games a little bit, because they, they do look kind of cool. Yeah, they look cool. Um, like, I think it looked a bit shitty the, the port onto 3DS looked a bit crappy from what mm. I saw of the quick look but I mean it looked super cool on Wii uh, and you could just play that on your Wii U I guess couldn't you? It's backward compatible right? Oh yeah yeah Wii U is yeah. unlike all other consoles yeah <laughs> well that's, that's not irrelevant to Rob though because yeah, he has a Wii <laughs> yeah that's yeah. true that's fair enough that's and my Wii gets used mostly for playing GameCube stuff <laughs> yeah, or which, yeah. <laughs> which the Wii U can't do right? Yeah. Mm. No, that, that is still the that is still maybe the main problem we're going to have with with the next Smash Brothers. It's like we're going to have to get pro controllers. I know <laughs> we don't have any choice. You've got to get new controllers. Can't play Smash Brothers on a Wii remote. What the fuck? Yeah, that is annoying. But yeah, and that's going to be the same for everyone, right? So <laughs> yeah. they're, they're so going to have like massive... super money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're going to go kaching on all those controllers. They're going to have four to of those pro production. controllers per Wii U. <laughs> Yeah, suddenly well, the like, price of pro controllers doubles when Smash Brothers comes out, and they're like, "Ah, ha, ha. ah you bastard!" Oh, that would be so mean. That would be a good way to recoup money if they're selling the console for cheap, though, because <laughs> all the hardcore people would need those damn things. Mm. All of a sudden, why can't I use my Steam controller? They say, <laughs> "Nope." <laughs> That would be really terrible for Smash Brothers, anyway. Well, at least the, the Pro Controllers are wireless. So, you know, because the GameCube controllers always had that stupid short cable. It's only a problem in your house where you can't move the Wii very, very far away from the TV. It's like it's it's it just has all the short cables. It's yeah. like one, well, well, it was always designed because the Cube was always designed to have that stupid handle to move it closer to you. Yeah. In the case of gameplay. It was gameplay. meant to sit in the, like, on the floor. It wasn't meant to be in an entertainment centre because those didn't really... Those weren't designed to hold consoles at the time, I suppose. I suppose it's not a massively Japanese problem, is it? No, that also. So it's... You have the space to have it. <laughs> Joke pile of consoles. Yeah, not... short cables aren't a problem normally. Shove me in the closet. <laughs> but particularly on your setup, where it's like, for some reason, it's like your, your TV stand or whatever, or where you have to plug the cables in for the Wii U, just makes them even shorter, because they're like... You can never actually get it far enough out. Well, it's because the TV's quite high up and yeah. it has to go into the amp and kind of that stuff. It's a proper setup. <laughs> but not compatible with GameCube controllers. No. It's too far away. So, yeah, wireless controllers, that'll help. Oh, well, you could have used wave birds. That's here. true. That's true. Never had any wave birds. No. I think I was always kind of. Well, it's because well, at the time, wireless lag was probably actually worse. I, yeah. yeah, true. <laughs> Plus, it was always like, actually, at the time WaveBirds and stuff came out, my GameCube used would have been mostly in my bedroom. Yeah, and that uh, too. And, your, and that bedroom was super tiny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> inverse problem. <laughs> so there was never a reason to get WaveBirds. 
also battery life on those things i seem to remember being pretty sucky <laughs> well you as you would expect for a while that's advice at that age mm. Mm. batteries so yeah what do you reckon Ninty should do to re- to to get back in the game then? I don't know what they should do. I think I've said do. it like three or four times. <laughs> what do you other think they Smash will Brothers. do? What do you think they will do rather than what yeah. they should do? Because there's all kinds of things that we should they we would like them to do. I mean, I would be it would be super cool if that if they became a software company for me, but that's never going to happen. Um, no, but to uh, be honest, I'm, I'm, I mean, yeah, it's it's the, lo- the loss of 200 mil is probably you know it's bad from an outward perspective, but. I guess they have. They still have billions in the bank. Oh, they've got a pile of cash, yeah. Yeah, from the Wii, so, it's, so it's not really worrying anyone in terms of Nintendo's longevity. They're going to be around. Yeah, but they could, they could, you know, drive themselves into the ground without if they just kept following the same, you know, doing the same thing. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Is it time for them to make a? I know it's going to be a while before it happens, but is this? now the sign that they should just make a, a normal console get back in the race but but can they that really does cost a lot of money right if you're talking about r&d for a next gen and i'm talking about next gen <laughs> console uh that that must cost i mean that must cost mm. a fortune i mean i mean i know or is, I, or I is know, their strategy just to make cheaper machines because you know the when the Wii U come out come, comes out, it yeah. sounds like an expensive proposition, doesn't it? Even with the tablet thing, it's yeah. like it's like a three sixty or a PS three, but twice the price. Mm. Yeah, I think a cheaper machine with that kind of branding could do a lot better. Because like, you know, what I mean, if Nintendo made an Ouya or whatever, they they'd have a lot more success than Ouya. <laughs> mm. Or has it just uh, been this, a shoddy year of releases? You know, I think that's pretty for sure was the case. I mean, if it launched with something stronger, well, I don't know though because like the the Nintendo first party game kind of rate of production hasn't really slowed that much. It's more like the third. No, 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 but it didn't launch with anything, did it? Of, of any worth? But no, no, it didn't. It but had we what, didn't. New either, Super Mario did Brothers U. That was about it. Yeah. What did the Wii have? It had Wii Sports. Yeah, I guess that's a, okay. a great yeah. game. <laughs> the single best game on the platform. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And Although, I guess they were hoping Technically Mario Zelda. Technically. And technically Zelda, yeah. And then Zelda was oh, awesome. Yeah. But, yeah. It was cheating, but yeah. It, it was cheating, but it was still awesome. Yeah, fair enough. And Excite Truck. Shit, yeah. <laughs> 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 Shit, yeah. Um. <laughs> well, it had a lot of cool stuff, didn't it? Because Monkey Ball launched as well. I, admittedly, it was the shit one. Yeah, it was, it was, when, it was when it was when Monkey Ball started to die. But at the same time, it was filled with so much weird stuff that was all fresh and new because of the remote. That it was actually pretty great. But they got some good laughs. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, I think we we's launch was fine this time. What uh, Zombie U? Yeah, maybe that was like the one interesting thing or games that came out a year prior on 360 no one cared about those no. I get, and I guess that, that that Lego Undercover came out like not long after launch but... yeah not as launch as it should have been though. no but yeah it's just not been a strong opening year in terms of content I mean let's put this in comparison with the Xbox One say okay yeah it's launch line or none, neither of the new consoles launch lineups are particularly great but hey, Xbox One has fours of five and Peggle two. <laughs> Peggle two bit. Yeah, actually, people are pretty happy with Dead Rising three. Yeah, as well. That's true. And it's got Titanfall coming in March. That's oh, like man. what? What? Like four months into the console, and they've already got probably the heaviest hitter they're going to have <laughs> for a, for a while. I saw and a video uh, of that. Um, just there's a bunch of gameplay videos out because there's like an alpha test version with a bunch of. Uh, Deliberately no degraded. One was meant to take videos off. Yeah, no one was meant to take videos of it because <laughs> they don't the problem, videos. Because uh, they they like half the, all the texture qualities to make it look bad uh, in order mm. to try. Um, but um, it just looks. But it looks awesome, fun. It's ridiculous. It looks so cool. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm still gonna that. end up with two copies, aren't I? Oh. Yes. <laughs> Definitely get that PC. Guys. <laughs> I was talking. I was talking with Kippers about it last night, and he's kind of on my side, and that he thinks the console version is going to be the one. But, but I, yeah, I, I, I know what I'm going to be like if, like, if everyone's playing it wherever, where, where it is. <laughs> I'm going to need to have it. God damn it! 
Now it's a keyboard, god damn it. <laughs> well, no, I don't know. I'm not sure because like we're trying to work I in the same way we've talked about it before, but it's like I don't think COD is it would be any fun on a PC. And if this is COD but in a different setting. Yeah, it kind of is. Then I'm not, I'm not sure obviously. the PC version is gonna play as well, you know, just based on prior experience. Why well, have you played COD on PC? I've seen it. <laughs> I haven't actually played it, but the problem I have with it is that, like, because you'd be so much more accurate on a PC, yeah, like, well, it, would just, it would just it would just become it? headshot snipe for the entire game. Yeah, it's just a matter of balance. It's like they haven't it's called, they just ported COD straight to PC and didn't really do anything. To yeah, it. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, this it all does rely on the fact of are they going are they going to balance it properly for PC? And it's it's an unknown, yeah. but I would I would really hope they do. Yeah, I'd be surprised if they didn't put, you know, plenty of work into it. But uh, they're only a small team. Well, let me put it in a different way. COD on PC is going to be a bit like Counter Strike, and I don't think any of us really like Counter Strike. I liked (laughs) Counter Strike for a while. Yeah, for a bit. That's because it was kind of it was was kind of new at the time. But I guess (laughs) well, new to us. I'm sure one point six would have been around for quite a long time before we even started playing that. And then Source. I don't know. I always found (laughs) I always found Counter Strike a highly frustrating experience. Just not a great deal of fun. Every night it would have the occasional high that would be really, really very high. <laughs> like you'd feel really, really good and really, really happy about something that just happened, or da 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 da. And those moments were really great. But the majority of the time, it's swear time. <laughs> <laughs> it's swear time. <laughs> That's every game for you. It's every shitty game. Know, but that one was particularly bad. I think Counter Strike probably, like at the time, there was a lot more contrast because that had the high lethality and slow movement compared to the arena shooters that we were used to. I think if you went from COD to Counter Strike, you'd be like, oh, it's not that different now. I mean, it is different, but yeah, that you wouldn't have that same feeling because sh- shooters have got slower and and more lethal just in general I don't know if they've got slower I don't know if you can say that about God well, they're certainly a lot slower than God's pretty fast well they're not exactly Quake 3 are they I mean or or UT I don't know you move pretty okay no it's not UT definitely not you do move pretty quick in God though but... unless you're aim down sighting hmm. yeah yeah what yeah, what's the movement speed in COD compared to like tier two characters? Is it like a sort of soldier uh, speed? It's probably faster than soldier speed. Yeah, it's got to be somewhere in like the, py- the medium card class. Yeah, it is probably near a, a demo, something like that. Right. The demo is not much faster than soldier. Yeah, but he's, he's nearly as fast as a pyro. <laughs> it's pretty close. I mean, that's a that's a very small increment, really. The demo runs like mid speed. But in a, in Pyro's arena, a little bit faster. But, yeah. but in the arena scene, is everyone, wow. everyone ran at scout speed all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. And then Nexus is like two scouts. <laughs> the uh, the um, all the sort of double jump and and wall running and all that stuff in Titanfall looks really cool as well. Looks like you use it a lot, which is awesome. Like in the footage I saw, there was quite a bit of jumping on the back of the of the Titans and shooting them up, which I thought would be more rare. But it turns out you, mm. there's quite a bit of leaping from a building on top of the thing and, and shooting the crap out uh, of it. Does that does that unfortunately make the Titans maybe not a good option? That's the question. Well, no, I, I think they've balanced it. Funny enough. <laughs> Although I'm not, I'm sure always worried about do. that. But they say that about Battlefield, don't they? It's like, oh, the vehicles are balanced. It's just like being in a vehicle sucks. <laughs> well, yeah. you have to compare it more to like, it's basically like Halo boarding a vehicle. It's like you have to be in a position to really quickly jump on a vehicle while, like, before it sees you. Yeah, and, that's the uh, thing. In Titanfall, in where there's all those buildings and stuff, that seems to make it easier. Yeah, because there's a lot of places that you could jump onto it from <laughs> without it seeing you. But if you if you're infantry and you you're in front of a titan and the titan sees you you're totally stuffed that's what maybe from what i can see um but then you have <coughs> there's a lot there's a lot you can do in terms of maneuvering around and because because you always have a uh it looks like anyway you always have a rocket launcher so you can always start you know actually pounding on it a bit as well as trying to get on top of it 
etc. <laughs> it's like that's the question. Is like, do you always have a rocket launcher, or does everyone just play engineer like that? Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Because you need a rocket launcher at all times. <laughs> Could be. I don't think it's team based. That uh, class based though, is it? It is. No, based. I wouldn't imagine. So. I think it's just you have a you have a assault rifle. Maybe. Yeah. Although I guess there are. Oh, I don't know. I, so yeah, I heard there, there was would snipers. be some. There has to be class customization. I, I, yeah. can't, I can't. It might not be like limited to a class. Yeah, it would be like cods. <laughs> yeah. Just customization. Yeah, pick what you want. Yeah, put it together. Yeah. yeah. So you pick a sniper rifle over a over a yeah assault rifle, which I quite like actually. Sometimes I th- I think like Battlefield might be better if they just adopted that strategy and just said, "Well, mix it up how you want." Well, they always did it for us. That they boned that system up. <laughs> Almost did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess it's more important in Battlefield actually, in a way, to have the classes a bit like that because obviously you could just carry a really good. Assault rifle and the rocket launcher all the time. Yeah, mm. that was the problem with Vietnam, the classic, where they gave yeah. the support guy the rockets and the giant machine gun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. That game was like not balanced, um, really. And the AI was hilarious when you used. Of course, it was the same as in Nine Four Two. It was terrible, but like, it was so funny that when you had AI players like replacing humans because they were just really dumb. And you couldn't see them because they were in the in the, in the fucking foliage. The foliage, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> foliage. <laughs> all that foliage. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, oh, so Nintendo. We to, yeah, Nintendo. How did we get to Titanfall? Oh, I just 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 from yeah, you just I was, brought it up. It I was bringing it up as a comparison of what the launch window looks like for Xbox One compared to Wii U. Um, yeah. Well, Wii U because Wii U has been so bad. It's definitely a flop. Like, there's no, there's no two ways about it. I kind of knew it was going to happen when they announced it. They've kind of changed. They have changed their tone a little bit on Wii U. Like, their marketing has changed from being the stupid happy family to oh, really? a really sad family. <laughs> well, to, now, now they, they, <laughs> <laughs> now they've actually been focusing on the games, right? And like, you know, sort of saying, "Hey, this is Ma- this is the new Mario," and it's like, "Oh, good." Uh, we don't need to see grandma's happy face as she get as she falls off the balance board and breaks a hip. <laughs> I just don't see enough advertising to see what crazy, but I'm sure they're not trying to advertise to me even now. Yeah. Well, well, they are, but not not on TV. They're not inventive enough. I think they've dropped their, um, you know, the celebrity endorsed th- 3DS stuff as well. I haven't seen one of those for a while. That's a shame. Some of that stuff was quite cool. Who was the guy that named his daughter Zelda? Was it? Oh, I know. It was, um, uh, yeah. That guy, yeah. That guy, (laughs) yeah. The one who, (laughs) the one who, (laughs) 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 who's in Aladdin as the genie. Yes. Robin Williams. I know. know. Robin Williams. Yeah. That guy. That was the last one I think of those that I think I ever saw. I'll say some of it was okay, but the majority of it was like Holly Willabooby or um, <laughs> Penelope Cruz sort of going, oh, yes, we like to play together or something. I don't know. It was, a, it, was, it was bull. The best one, of course, was like Patrick Stewart playing brain training. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. I think it was Patrick Stewart. <laughs> Didn't they have like Rihanna or something ridiculous or someone? Yeah. Or Beyonce or something. Someone insanely famous. And they yeah, had, they had- like, a and then Nicole Kidman had, back in the day. Had actually, Nicole Kidman, yeah. Was it? Wasn't? Was it Nintendo who had Rihanna come on and be like, "I'm the new CEO of something"? Oh no, 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 that was Alicia Keys oh, yeah. getting involved in something. <laughs> it was something game related, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like I'm the new CEO of some dumb division that they made up just for this thing, <laughs> like basketball or something, or, or was it tech? It might have been like Nokia or a mobile thing. Yeah, maybe can't remember. <laughs> Hmm. Searching for DS <laughs> ads is, doesn't really help because it's just architecture and design of Scotland ADS ads <laughs> ads and does <laughs> well there's a Mario Kart DS ad down there if from Japan yeah it doesn't count what, are you, what were you trying to say I was just going to see if I can find a list of the Nintendo the DS ads oh. see who's actually been on them Was it? So yeah, it, I yeah. guess that's Nintendo, really. Mm. I think we got Patrick Stewart. I was right. Oh yeah, and he's next to that woman. 
<laughs> is that Julie Walters? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> There's a random there is a Beyonce yeah, one. I hope that wasn't an actual one. Yes. Oh god, yeah. There is a, there is a Beyonce one. You were right. And a bunch of women. That's um, girls allowed. Oh yeah. <laughs> a bunch of women. I couldn't really see that from here. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a bunch of women sitting playing the essence. There's Penelope Cruz. Uh, there's there's Kidders. Uh, Kidders. Yep. There's a dog. That pretty much covers it. <coughs> There's some other random person I don't know. And a few more random people. Yeah, okay, people. Oh, God. Oh, God, the tickle. <laughs> Drink something quick. <coughs> oh. No. So. Finally strikes. What, what else is news? <laughs> what else is news? Go on, Zag. You must so, know some. No, I really don't. I don't have anything. So. You guys have been oh. paying attention at all. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh no! Our Jesus source Christ. of news is having a coughing fit. Don't hurt myself. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really bad timing. <laughs> I love how Rob went further away and it was almost as loud. Oh shit! <laughs> Just give us all the right. topic and then and then you can. All right, King Development. Oh like, right, that yeah. yeah. God damn it! Do we have to talk about that? Yeah, because it's what dumb. It's dumb, but. Huh. I mean, it's not unheard of, but okay. King are the developers of Candy Crush. Um, right. Or to give it its full title, Candy Crush Saga. Yeah. Saga. Um, now things came to a bit came to light regarding their trademarking practices because they tried to trademark the word Saga. Well, they they trademarked Candy and Saga. Oh no, no, it started with Saga, and it, it, this became a problem because they issued a. Uh, um, I think they did both at the same time. I think this is just oh. one thing. I, I think the news about Candy came out later. The reason why it, that's the what news about Saga came out first because it conflict. They put some suit against the developers of the Banner Saga. I don't think they actually called a suit. They like no, they, they, they they filed something. Against well, they them. said they said they, they basically put a thing that said you're using our trademark, but we don't mind. <laughs> no, it was a, it was like a proper lawyer thing. They then said we don't mind, but the thing the the sort of yeah, filing they, stayed active that, for a while. It's just that they have to file it. To preserve their trademark, if anyone uses their word that they've trademarked, they have to file against it, even if they're not going to do anything. Basically. Yeah, yeah, but it took a while for them to actually remove the filing, even after they said, "Yeah, it's fine," you know. But even so, they did it, and it's like it was a bit of a problem for a while because the Banner Saga were just like, "What's going on? Are we in trouble?" Ah, how? Could, or, and it also prompted the they they trademarked the word candy, which then prompted the um the fairly hilarious Candy Jam. Yeah. Where a lot of developers came together and did like, well, let's quickly make a game about candy. <laughs> anyway, just trademarking laws, kind of dumb. How can you trademark a word like that that's already commonly used? It's it doesn't make sense. Well, they did. I mean, they. I'm going to trademark the. Well, they need the, considering like the ridiculous number of clones there are of that game that have either the word candy or saga in the title. Then yeah, I think they probably want to stop all those, but there's got to be an easier way than trademarking candy and saga. And you're not going to stop them. Well, no, but at least you have a legal way to fuck them, fuck them up. I mean, it's, it's only a problem if one of them becomes popular, and clones rarely do. No, but it's not to do with becoming popular, is it? It's because they're confusing the marketplace, where there's just a bunch of spam things that look almost like the thing that they're trying to... I guess, but if they're... But I don't see how that's much of a problem, because if you did a search for candy, because Candy Crush is a big deal, and it's obviously the best of the, all these... Da, 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 it floats to the top of the list. I don't think, that, I don't think that's enough of a guarantee. <laughs> For the for companies and the, it's really just like I don't know. I don't. I don't agree. It's like I don't know. If you're the best, you're at the top. Simple as that. If a clone comes out and they happen to be better than yours and they float to the top, fuck you. I'm with the clone on this one. <laughs> it's <laughs> uh, all these Doom clones. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but they weren't all called Doom something. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably were at the time. <laughs> Not any longer though. <laughs> Call of Doom. Doom fight gun. <laughs> <laughs> we have to make a game called Doom fight gun. <laughs> Doom saga. I don't know. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? I just kind of think like the quality of your game stand on its own. Do you need these pursuits really? 
Well, it's just. I mean, sure, like trademarking the entire game name and making sure no one can tarnish the the game name in its full. <laughs> it's a off incredibly. Yeah, badly. saga. That's not much of a theme, is it? Really, it's like. They, candy, they, really. they have several games that are called the something saga admittedly but none of them are related no one of them is pet rescue saga and also none of them are sagas in any way <laughs> yeah exactly. by any definition of the word they're not multi-part and they're not epic so it's not a series and it's not a uh, it's not a it's not a dare. It's, not a dare. <laughs> it's just not anything, is it? It's like it's just the use of a word in the title. Well, then, it's... like if it wasn't such a ridiculous, the use of a common word in the title. <laughs> if, if if it wasn't, if it wasn't impossible for legal stuff to have any grey areas in, because that's kind of the whole point of legal stuff is to remove all <laughs> greyness in every case. It's like you just need a way to be able to say that is clearly a clone of my game. Get the fuck out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Name or or else, yeah, yeah or yeah. name or graphics or or anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like just look at it and use your use your common sense and say, well, look, we did this. I suppose the problem is is that the trademarking law isn't a good way of saying we were here first. That's what surely that's what copyright is for. Well, yeah, arguably, but uh, even then, it's just like the same problem only in a different case. Mm. There's no you can't have grey areas in law, but the trouble is that in order, in order to enforce anything, you need to make everything super specific, which just makes everything really dumb. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's just the words candy and saga. I don't know. It's just just the fact that they tried to do that. It's like, I mean, didn't they get enough of, uh, of a hint from when Xenomax tried to do it with scrolls, and no one really liked them for that? And it's, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Maybe we should move everything into the patent system. I've patented a game which involves candy and has the words candy and crush and saga in the title. If any one of those three words in a game of candy in, <laughs> you're infringing my patent. The problem is, if, the, if patent law is true, would be applied, would we have any other match three games other than Bejeweled? Well, or, have, or even Zuki, but Zuki have, might have come first. You'd have to use them as like separate things where you're only patenting the overall, like, style or combination of name and visual you wouldn't be able to co- co- you wouldn't be able to pass up the gameplay what mechanics mechanics yeah or something mm-hmm. I don't think know this is a dumb conversation anyway because that's an even worse system Patent is just as fucked as trademarks and copyrights yeah I I don't think there is an easy answer to it I don't think it's possible for there to be an easy answer but well, not a definable easy answer. That's the problem. No. Like, you can take two things and look at them, and a human can just sort of say, "Yeah, these things are fucking identical, <laughs> <laughs> or way or, too close, or way too close for it." And it's a, and that's for a problem. It to be a coincidence. Yeah, oh, but then you know to put that into words. Yeah, legal words, enforceable words. I mean, that's why the whole thing about Apple and Samsung blew up, wasn't it? Like, the similarities yeah. between And then that judge was like, no, this one's more cool. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> that's maybe the one time where it's been like, what is the legal definition of cool? <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to give you the verdict because we think your product is the one that people like more. <laughs> and it's like, wait, what? <laughs> that's not how this works. <laughs> So there you go, that's that. But then I kind of wish it did, did but not in a legal <laughs> <Dad>. way. <laughs> I corrected myself, fuck off. I don't, I don't, I don't think that was a pretty funny one. <laughs> wasn't saying it was bad. It's the past tense of, or more past tense of did, wasn't it? <laughs> We're further back in time. <laughs> past era. I, I did it last week. I done it last, last decade. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, I don't know. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about bad copyright laws or patents or whatever the fuck we were doing. One of those. I did it. I think we're done with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's next? It was just dumb. The news. I ain't got a lot else to be honest. Though. Those are my two biggies. Okay. Maybe we're done with news. Okay. Well, it's <laughs> been an hour. <laughs> Somehow. Cool. What you been playing? Um... Rob, <laughs> learning words real good. <laughs> you learned them. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning patience and humility in the face of assholery. <laughs> <laughs> Rampant assholery. <laughs> uh, right, what have we got? 
Uh, you're going to me, are you? Yeah, because I went first last time. Okay. I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> That's not a word, also. <laughs> so I was making a point. <laughs> yep. uh, so I've been playing Pimple Effect 2 <laughs> for some reason still. Because I found some tables that I like. But you could have just been playing tables you liked all along on the other Pimple games that you have. Yeah, but I don't have, I don't have Pimple OK. Um, and the free table this month is Black Knight, oh. which I've already played a ton of on the... Uh, the 360 one. Yeah. Um, so near to that. But yeah, I found some tables that I like. I get the feeling that the first ones I played through might have been from Pimble Effects 1 and were the ones they ported across. Right. Because they're, kind of, as I said before, kind of dull and kind of crap. But the last three I've played have been all right. Like, they're not great. They're not, like, actual as good as real pimple table type stuff, but they're interesting enough. Okay. So, redeemable qualities found. So, what are the tables? They're still pimple, so we don't really need to talk about it. So, the ones, the ones I've liked so far are Pasha, although I think the rule set for that is a bit complex, and the table plays quite, really very hard. Um, too hard. Um, so, it's a bit of a... It's, it, it's, a, it's a better design, so that was the one that said, hmm, things are looking up. Um and then uh, the one, the two I've really liked so far were the Bio Lab and Secrets of the Deep. The Bio Lab, yeah. okay. The Bio Lab's kind of bonkers because it's about like making weird creatures and then like um, mutating them into other things, and... as you would expect. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's, it's got some um, it's got some kind of bonkers mechanics. Um, and the Secrets of the Deep is about like just being underwater. <laughs> it's pretty much its only theme, like being a submersible and recovering shipwrecks and stuff. And um, it has like magnets all over the table, so there are ways. Like, there's one of the ramps where if you don't get it all the way up and it comes back down, it goes ah flooding, and you have to then get your ball to land on these mag- magnetized hot spots on the table to plug the leaks. Hmm. Which is okay. that's, that's kind of interesting. That's yeah, a, that sounds kind of cool. That's a that's a mechanic I haven't seen before. And there's a, a pendulum you have to hit to hit targets that are out of range of the ball. And stuff like that, and it's a, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. The uh, the production is definitely improved on it. There's a bit more like proper sound effects, <laughs> <laughs> and a talking shark, you know. So it's uh, a couple of video modes. There's just more to these last three tables that I played, and it's much better because of it. Um, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say on that. I don't want to go on about pinball too long about pinball. Yeah. Pinball update. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the only one that cares. <laughs> it's the Happy Salad Pinball Minute with Rob Kemp. <laughs> I'd be the sound. You'd have to add like some classic pinball bumper sounds. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not some bow bow. <laughs> bow. Bow. Um, what else have we been playing then? Uh, I finished Antichamber. Yep. Ooh, okay. I played cool. all the way through it and maxed it out now. Yeah, with a bit of Zach's help on the last couple. Uh, <laughs> they were kind of obvious. You just yeah, I just, I just hadn't seen them. Yeah, they were they were, they were obvious once. I, once, yeah, once I knew where to look, kind of thing. Um, so, what's your overall that, impression? That game's pretty cool, but I think as we talked about on the game of the year stuff, I think it starts very strongly, and then unfortunately gets a bit bogged down in its block puzzles. Yeah, it's like it loses its cool. Right. It's like it has it does a lot of awesome stuff and it has the ability to make you go, huh, or oh you bastard or <laughs> that kind of stuff. Is and it's it's pretty clever all the way through, but even with the block puzzles it's pretty clever. But I don't know, I think the block puzzles take away from what made it interesting in the first place. Right. And it's it becomes a little too reliant on them. Um When do they I don't, they I, I don't know how they could have fixed or, that, but I mean how I mean how much of the game uh, is block puzzles? I don't know. I'd say a good, a good half right. relies on your manipulation of the blocks. Yeah. Um, at least. They so it's really, just a you... bit too reliant on that one, on that mechanic. Uh, yeah. I mean, the mechanic evolves as you go through the game, mm. um, making it easier technically <laughs> Yeah, as you go through. But there's a couple of really awkward ones, like not essential puzzles, like the one where you had to, there's one with the glass case. And you had to try and make the blocks um, 
break the lasers within the three-dimensional glass case. We yeah. have very limited ways of directing them. Well, it's like I thought of, I thought of the obvious way to do that, which is just like you, you draw the cube thing so they fill in the squares, and then if you draw the edges of the cube, it fills in the cube. And I did that, uh, but then it made the game crash. <laughs> I, I didn't think I didn't think of that. I spent ages like trying to draw lines from top to bottom to make like a diagonal to cut the lasers. No. Which also worked eventually. Yeah. But I can't remember how I actually... I think I did get it... I got it to fill in enough one time that didn't cause the game to crash. But the first time I did it, it tried to fill in too much at once or something, and it just the game just freaked out. <laughs> it just broke. I did that another time where... Do you remember the stupid thing where you're in the giant glass pillar and yep. you have to get from the bottom to the top? Yeah. And the way to do it is just, like, point the cubes upwards and then ride them, basically. Yeah, several times. Yeah. But, like, the, the way I originally tried to do that was, like, I can just make it for the cubes. I'll just fill the whole column. Oh, I see. Right. <laughs> so I tried doing that. That made the game crash as well. <laughs> it doesn't like a certain amount of cubes. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it is good. It is good. It's very. It's a very cool game. It's like... it. I was using it as kind of like... Um, when I had a bit of time to spare, but an undefined amount of time to spare, so I could bail out of it at any point. Yeah, because it doesn't matter. Yeah. You just go wherever. Which So it would prove pretty useful Apart for that. right at the end. Yeah. Like I've got, oh, yeah, the end. So in the end bit, you have to do it in one go. But, um, it's kind of cool, actually, how the ending... I don't know, my mild spoiler alerts. I don't think it really matters for this, but um, how, like, the sort of style of the rendering sort of changes as you go through that end bit a little bit, that some of the lighting becomes a bit more realistic looking, a bit more faded rather than, like, the weird, solid, almost solid blocks of sullen blue. Okay, or, maybe. that's cool. And the, and, the, and the rays, the black rays yeah. are pretty cool. And even that end bit with the sort of giant open space that you Random can fall shit through. Waiting in space. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of nice that that, that they that had that style change because it does kind of make it feel like it's the end, you know. And yet, there's no actual story to it at all. No, and it just stops. No, I think <laughs> it's like that's oh, it, and then nothing. <laughs> well, you know, it showed the antechamber logo. Yeah, you know, is that a late title card situation? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> technically, I suppose apart from. There's, yeah, no, is, there's yeah. no titles to it at all. You just spawn in the options screen, which is the start of the game as well. Yeah. And then it's a quick to desktop finish. Yeah. What? That's, it's kind of that's, well. that's the only way to get out of the game as well. I know, but it's kind of an awesome ending. It's just like, if you've reached the end, quit to desktop. <laughs> Once the credits are finished game. It's not just instant. <laughs> yeah, I know, it should, it should have been. The whole game world should have collapsed. And but just then again, you just think it would have crashed. <laughs> I suppose. Well, and, I think, and the next I think time you boot time, it, it should say, by the way, that was supposed to happen. Yeah, I think at the time, lots of people, even at the end of the credit scroll, thought it just crashed. Because no. it's like, there was other games that did that, I guess, sort of around a similar time as that game as well, just quit steadily. There was other several other games that just had the end, it just quits. And mm. everyone was like, was that, did it work or did that break? Mm. It's like, it's sort of cool, but it's sort of a user, user interface issue where people don't expect that to happen. You should just put like a blank screen with just a giant button in the middle that just says quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then they know. <laughs> yeah, you need to quit the game and get out of this room. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was pretty cool. Was it? I got about four or five hours out of it, I reckon. Yeah, the end. So for those worried good. about the length. So it's, uh, yeah, it's all right. It, it actually, I was surprised how little I remembered. Or how little, it, me do it. yeah, how little it mattered yeah. that that, that you'd I saw. A I'd, bit. I'd seen, yeah, that I saw Zach Oops. play it through beforehand. Um, I'd forgotten enough. Let's put it that way. After a few months, yeah. to to make it enjoyable, I don't think now that I've done it myself, it's going to be so good to replay. No, you're going to have to wait but, quite a long time. Yeah. Well, that's just the but, way, isn't it? Often. Well, it's a puzzle uh, game, so you puzzle know, games, yeah. That's, that's where it yeah, is. It's about figuring it out yourself. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, played a bit more Rogue Legacy. Um, Me too. I I finished my first run. I get I finished my, like the main game, yep. I guess. And cool. I see what you mean about the ending. Yep. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, the ending is kind of cool. In its own <laughs> so even, meta even if, way. Even if the bosses, the last two bosses are kind of dumb. I mean, yeah. that, that one boss that's two bosses. 
Yeah, was, they're kind of dumb. But then again, all the bosses in that game were a bit dumb. But... Yeah. Well, it's like, <laughs> it's mainly just how like the second form of that last boss is easier than the first form. Yeah. <laughs> Although it caught me off guard, I had to learn its patterns a little bit. Like, so it caught me out a few times. Yeah. But then once you work it out, it's like, okay, you can do this more solidly than you can do the first bit. And you just basically get given a load of health in yeah. between the two stages of that boss. Yeah. <laughs> Which is nice. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I've been trying to work my way through the first new game plus. Um, yeah, things get a lot harder. <laughs> I was trying to work out whether I think New Game Plus Plus is actually easier than New Game Plus because the one the the one thing that always springs to mind is the fire mages because it's like in the first run you get them they fire like the free fireballs yeah poo, poo, poo. and then you get the blaze locks then, yeah again, then so. you get New Game Plus where it replaces all of those with the ones that you sometimes find in the regular one where they fire five yeah like five, five, but they're not as accurate no so it's like a spread mm. so like the ones where it only fires three they always go directly to you whereas the five is like an area yeah and, but then when you get to New Game Double Plus you get the I don't know if you even saw one of these in the in the base game they sometimes spawn as mini bosses oh Anon and Banon no whatever. you get there's a, like the third tier of that of the flame dude just creates giant balls. That oh no, I've like, seen wow. those. Yeah, oh, yeah, I've seen those. And when you get to the new game double plus, and all of them are those. Oh shit! That might actually be easier than the spam. Mm, the really maybe. slow moving giant. I, mean, balls. I guess it's easier to predict. Yeah, and easier to lead, I suppose. Yeah, that's only one enemy though. Because <laughs> I mean, once you get to the new game double plus, and all the enemies are their tier three versions. Shit, that's quite fucking ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> I'm finding it pretty hard as it is. So, so. I've, I've taken out one of the bosses, but the bosses aren't the hard part. No, the bosses aren't the hard bit. But it's just getting getting to them. <laughs> do you use the teleport to get to them? Is that how you're supposed to do it? Or I mean, because you're I'm half you... dead by the time I reach a boss, surely. Yeah, it's like, do you ever do the thing where you basically lock the castle so the next guy can just teleport straight there and have a go at the boss? Oh, I didn't realize that's what you that you could still do that. <laughs> what do you mean you could still do that? That you could still telly around if you had been or you got the map but that's the whole point of the locking the castle isn't it uh, i thought it, i thought it locked the everything down oh but, but you, you meant the same the layout right yeah, yeah. i did no, I, I, mean, I did it so. well no why would you want to? yeah more money <laughs> yeah i'd never use the locking mechanic yeah no okay that makes sense it's just like once you get good enough to make it to a well it's like really <laughs> well the way i play it once you get good enough i suppose is the thing once you get good enough you can just you can just leave all the statues in the teleport rooms alive yeah, that's until what, you're that's ready to go into a boss room. Yeah. And then you just go around and harvest them all. <laughs> yeah. It's like, right, I'm ready for this, I need, but I need my health back. It's like, oh, I've seen all these teleporters on my way, so I'll just nick the statues. Yeah. Okay. That's left, the left of... statue always has health, doesn't it? Yeah, left statues always health, right statues always mana. Oh, okay. And that's why, that's why you... That's why basically you always clear the castle because then you find at least four teleporters because there's one at the entrance of each area and the boss for the castle. Yeah. So you always have four statues worth of health and if you've upgraded potions to maximum, that's full health, basically. <laughs> yeah. So clear the whole castle before fighting the boss? Well, it depends if well, you need the health. <laughs> yeah, find as many teleporters as you can. But if you find the boss first and you're still healthy, then just, yeah, it doesn't matter. It. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, the, the tellies just act as usual health points if you if you plan ahead yeah, yeah. Hmm. but it's really cool still loving it i still find myself like even, even now that like, i finished it once like every time i go back to it it's just like it's very hard to stop yep i do want to get at least one new game plus down <laughs> not only for the achievement but <laughs> well yeah there <laughs> is say i've done it but what's the there's an achievement for mocking the traitor yeah, I think that's one of the new ones they added. Yeah, I don't know what that is. No, I don't know what that is yet. <laughs> hmm. I seem to have passed my cold across. <laughs> and there was, there's like they added new classes as well, like new. I haven't seen any of those. Well, there's one that's actually a new class class, and then some traits basically. Is that the special class? <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that yet either. Yeah. But then, so they're like some of the new traits aren't as cool as I was hoping. There's like there's a, one of the traits is the one, and I was like, oh yeah, Shit, yeah, but that, that's not actually. Cool. It's just it's just a graphics change. Yeah. Well, I think it it also it means you it means you can see secret passages. Oh, does it? Oh, okay. Because the, because of the way those graphics are, you sure. can see where there's pass throughable. Oh, okay, cool. 
But that's not what I was hoping for. I was like, I want a power where I can just stop projectiles. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what the one means, surely. <laughs> yeah, just put your hand up and everything. <laughs> but that would probably make the game way too easy. <laughs> <laughs> they should have made the one a class. Like a super rare yeah. class. Yeah. Where you can just stop projectiles, but it costs mana. <laughs> And also, because if the one can't be a trait, can it if multiple people have it? No. Well, no, no, no <laughs> technically, in the law of the Matrix, because there's only one the one at a time, and then he dies, and then the next one. Well, that, oh, I suppose, <laughs> yeah. That's true. So anyway. I don't, I, don't, I think I've had a, like, a role where I've had two the ones in it. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's, that depends whether you think all three of those children actually exist at the same time. Or whether it's just like one of these children is grows it's the up one, into is that. the one that's born. Yeah. <laughs> but who the fuck cares? That's a dumb argument. <laughs> yeah. I've got two of the ones. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rogue Legacy. Yep. How are you yeah, going Dan? Have you got past the first room? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I got past the first room. I got the I got I took your advice and just bought loads of health every time I managed to get some money, and also smash everything to get the money. I hadn't figured that one out yet <laughs> at the time. No, so now I'm it's actually very important in the early game. Yeah, so now I'm actually progressing, but I'm worried that I've got to a point now where like I I've bought so many health things that um, but I'm still not good enough to afford the next one because it's in, the inflation on it is is faster than I'm actually surviving. I think. Well, I mean, that's when you start spreading out into like armor or whatever. Yeah. Like, well, so I can't. Yeah, I need to get. I need to find blueprints though because I can't make any armor. Well, I don't mean armor. I mean the armor. I mean the armor upgrade. Yeah, there's oh, an armor right, upgrade okay. that just boosts but, the power of whatever you're wearing. Yeah, it's but I'm not wearing anything on my on my torso thing, so I haven't. But that doesn't any. matter. Oh yeah, it's just the base step. It's just right. like it's basically like inherent armor. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? Oh, okay, so I should spend on that then. Okay, so that's yeah. the equivalent of of help. It will actually help. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a second. Armor. It's a secondary way of being resistant. But I found just as I found just as effectively, like actually, just being more powerful, like in terms of yeah. attack. If you can kill just, everything just, in just, one just, or two yeah, hits, just get to <laughs> right. it really quick and go blat, then it's not a problem. <laughs> okay, yeah. So maybe I should start concentrating. That's on why that. I, I, I quite like playing. If you've seen them, like the ninjas and, and the hockage, I guess, like were fairly useful to me early on because yeah. of the the double damage all the time, guaranteed. Yeah, right. Um, because I've just been, t- I've just been picking your the you know barbarian or. Whatever the talisman dude is, yeah, battle, battle paladin, like you were saying, that seems yeah. to be helping as well. But then, yeah. if you're if you're if you haven't upgraded attack at all, then you might need to put some into that as well to make it so that they can so they everything as long as everything dies in two hits, that's right. that's the gold standard of what what your yeah. level of attack should be. Yeah, so I definitely don't have that. It's taking three hits on some of them on the on the um, floating some of the floating enemies, which is really annoying. Mm. Yeah, those ones especially because when you hit them away. <laughs> Yeah, like, exactly. Well, come back in. <laughs> yeah, come back and know it's annoying. I, th- I think I went. I put attack over armor. I think in terms of the base stats for up- upgrading. Yeah, I haven't got that much in my armor stat. It's c- c- kind of what I'm working on, <laughs> to be honest. Now, yeah, I can't remember what I did the first time. It's just like once you get to the point where you don't take any hits, the armor doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, all right, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> So that's I'll get there. I'll get there. Maybe. Yeah. I will continue to play. <coughs> Are you enjoying it? That's the main thing. Well, I wasn't at first, but I am now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we'll see you got over the hump. Yeah, I guess so. I was trying to work out, like you don't, you don't really play, I guess, many straight up fast action games, do you? But of of, well, of that of, speed, I suppose. Yeah. What sort of thing do you mean? I don't know. Sort of just <laughs> try and think of another one, like Meat Boy. Yeah, I've played like plenty that, of Meat Boys. Yeah, because I introduced you guys to Meat Boy, didn't I? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, back in the day. I just mean it may have been a, been a while since you played something at that speed with. Uh, possibly, yeah. I guess. I don't know what the equivalent would be that I played lately. Yeah, endless runners. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Endless runners. <laughs> Endless runners. Yeah, I don't really go in for those. Right, so uh, it, what, what else you got, else? Rob? Is that your... Uh... Oh, I've got, got a, a little bit more, yeah. Uh, no, when I started playing Beyond Two Souls. Mm-hmm. Is that really a 
two player game for you. I mean, you, you can you can. Put I mean, it, you or is she just in... there for watching it like she was for? No, 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 it actually has a two player mode. <laughs> yeah. You put it in duo, yeah. and one person takes control of Aiden, whereas the other takes control of Jody. Yeah. So I've been Jody. That's <laughs> well, and she's been Aiden, and it's like girlfriend mode, as they used to call it. <laughs> kind of, yeah. But here's my overall feeling thus far. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was Great. expecting that. <laughs> it's, yeah, I don't know, we're two hours in. Right. And I don't know how much of the game that is. I I wager it's anywhere from a quarter up to 50% of the way through. Right. Um, and I know about the same amount of information about Jody and Aiden as I did before I started playing the game. <laughs> it's It hasn't got a hook. Not yet, anyway. I don't know where I'm supposed to be intrigued. I don't know where I'm supposed to be invested in this story. Because um, it's very... It plays out as a series of memories uh, that just jump about in time. Yeah. Like It doesn't play out linearly. You're jumping about all over the place. So at one point, she's running away from the cops. At one point, you're training for the CIA. At one point, you're going through the party mm-hmm. as, a t- as an awkward teenager being called a freak by everyone, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's just, all right, what, what, what am I supposed to be getting involved with here? I don't know what I'm supposed to be latching onto as a, as a storyline. Is, yeah. is, is, am I just supposed to be putting, piecing together this person's life? And is that supposed to be enough? It's like, I don't think it is. And it's and it's partly because actually I don't think the writing is strong anywhere. Hmm. I don't think there's been it's just not it, none of the scenes are particularly interesting. It takes a lot of skill to carry off that um that the you know, non chronological narrative or whatever you call yeah. it. Yeah. Uh and uh, if they have, if the writing isn't up to scratch then it's it's not gonna work, is it? It's just it's a real shame. It's just been not, I, it's, the story is the single most important thing about a, that game, and after two hours, I don't think it's there. I, you know, it's like it's, it might as well not have been there. It might have just been. I might as well have just been playing a sketch show with different characters every time. Well, you haven't like, reached. You haven't reached the. In the, fact, a sketch show would have been better because it would have been funny. You, you haven't reached <laughs> the Last of Us tipping point where it suddenly gets good. <laughs> Maybe this game does the same thing. Or yeah, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, admittedly, it hasn't wasn't that long ago that I actually got the slow down, the slow motion mechanic come into play. Right, where the game slows down and you're supposed to match Jody's direction in order to pull off the move correctly. Yeah, that's only really been around for one or two scenes. Hmm. Like, so uh, okay, they're introducing that fairly late. Um, I have seen like um like the best bit I've played so far was the action sequence that I played at Eurogamer. <laughs> um, which is when you're being hunted on the train, like being uh, running away from the cops and, going, and that sequence was pretty cool. Um But it's it's just an action scene, you know, there's nothing <laughs> there's no <laughs> narrative genius. But it did it was interesting watching because Gnome obviously did the ghost bits and I mm-hmm. did some yeah. bits myself and screwed up in a different way to what I did at Eurogamer. <laughs> um, so the scene played out very slightly differently, but they all ended up back in the same place, really. Right. Um, so it, it's like, at the moment, it doesn't feel like there's any consequence to any choice. Yeah. Um, and there probably isn't. There probably isn't. No. It's like <laughs> the, bran- the branches, <laughs> if there's a branch, they're tiny. Like, it's like, let's just move one foot away from the path and then we'll just and come back, come shimmy like to the right again and then we're back in. It's, uh, yeah, there's been no sense of I mean, maybe me that, having purpose. Maybe that's meant to be a good thing, where it's like it makes the way you travel through the scene seem less linear, even if the end point is the same. Mm-hmm. And it's like that maybe that's just because you're trained to hope that choices will matter to the story, that you expect choices to matter to the story, but they don't. Yeah. Rather than like your choices mattering to the way you get to that point in the story. Yeah. <laughs> I think because of the lack of choice, though, is it, it just makes playing the game less interesting. Because yeah. Heavy Rain kind of had this thing where it felt like what you were doing would alter something. Or that there were times where you knew, oh, hey, this is actually going to be kind of a big decision. Yeah. Um, it's been none of that so far. Mm. Um, 
Well, that was something people were saying about it when they were saying, like, because of the way it cuts back and forth. It's like, you, you know she survives this because she's there in the future. Mm. <laughs> You've already seen it. Well, yeah, I don't necessarily have to know about the big, the big points like that, but it's just... I wonder if, because the game opens at the latest point in time that I've seen right. thus far. The prologue is her just standing there going, okay, what are my, what are the memories I have that led up to this point? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a classic. And it's like, and then is everything going to change after that point? Like, can I alter the story? <laughs> are you going to remember that everything that happened and then be like, and now something? <laughs> and now, yeah, now here's how it plays out based on those memories. Maybe. And how long does that sequence last? Or is it just like the suicide mission at the end of Mass Effect 2 and plays out in like five minutes? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. No. It's 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 not endearing itself to me <laughs> right now, which is a shame because I like I don't I, I should put this in perspective. I don't think Ellen Page or Willem Dafoe or any of the actors they have are bad. No, either. I think they put on a good performance, but they're just working with dirt. Yeah, <laughs> it's a real shame. No. I don't know. You think you think they'd be, they'd make it a step up or something, but it's just a bit of a slide, you know. It's just, it's just quite sad, really. Yeah, I mean they've done they did they do one interesting thing. I suppose that like uh, the like from a from a design perspective, there is one interesting thing to take away, in that when we started the game and we put it in duo mode, it gave us the option for or it gave uh, each player the option of I play games regularly, oh, right, or I never play games or rarely play them, yeah, and it changes how the game controls, right, yeah, uh, for that. So with Noon playing as Aiden in I rarely play games mode. Um, it's kind of interesting because like I'd, I'd played it with full control and it basically gives you full flight control to move around and look at things and do things but it's very guided in rarely mode like it gives you like these orange markers to say you can fly to here and stuff like that which pro- which seemed to I don't know from, from the way Gnome was reacting to how that controlled it was, it was both equally very useful at times and immensely frustrating at others because <laughs> it's like I can't go where I want to go or can't get it to do what I want to do, um, which I think caused us to fail a couple of scenes because you just couldn't get it to go with exactly where we wanted. But which you could have done if you'd been in full on mode. Yeah, I did, did ask her like at one point. It's like, would, would it just been easier to give you full control? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's that. That's far. I'm, I'll stick with it. I'll play it to the end. But yeah, of course. Um, I'm just. Just because I want to see if there is this moment, this <laughs> like, oh, I see what you did there, David Cage, you smart bastard. Um, <laughs> or whether he's just bad. Yeah. I, th- I think Noam lost a bit of biscuit in her tea. Disaster. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Stop the podcast. It's a disaster. Apparently. Let's <laughs> get in tea. Oh, Rob is well distracted by that. Yeah, I am. What else did you play? Uh, I played a bit of Injustice oh, yeah, oh, as well, uh, finally. I was going to say, um, I, you reminded me that I just, um, uh, a guy that I've been working with, well, that worked at my company, left on, he was a contract, but he left on yesterday, Friday. Um, and he used to be in the games industry and he worked for Brendan McNamara uh, at one point, as in the guy oh, right. who made L.A. Noir and all that stuff. I yeah. think I was thinking of that because I was thinking of the facial recognition tech or whatever. So I was thinking from from beyond <laughs> Two Souls through to L.A. Right. Noir and thinking of the guy that made that. Anyway, uh, his reputation for being a total cock is apparently uh, absolutely justified. Apparently he's really, really, really horrible. Which Who, makes McNamara total sense. Or, yeah, or McNamara. David Cage. Not, not okay. David Cage, McNamara. Right, yeah. uh, but that was quite David. funny to hear from someone who had actually worked with the guy. And uh, yes. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so there you go. Inside knowledge. Not that it would, everyone didn't already know this after L.A. Noir came out that he was a <laughs> yeah. cop. But, additional uh, proof. Uh, additional proof from someone who actually worked with him. Yes. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, carry yeah. on. What was the other thing? Uh, I've. Probably, I, I played a brief bit of uh, Injustice Gods Among Us around uh, around Eddie's house. Mm-hmm. Which is... Is uh, that the weird DC thing? That's the DC fighter made by um, the Mortal Kombat team. Right, yeah. Uh, and Nether you like Mortal Kombat, right? Although it was... Mortal Kombat was good, yeah. I'm, I'm not so convinced about the fighting engine for this one, if I'm honest. It seems fine, but it's... Okay. I don't know. It, it's it's very different feeling 
doesn't feel quite so immediate. Like you have to be a bit more deliberate, I think, with what you plan to do at any moment. Um, which I'm not sure is, uh, yeah, I don't know where I sit with that, whether it's better or not. But, but we were basically just playing through the story mode, mm -hmm. which you know, in Mortal Kombat style, is pretty damn cool. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's just like, it's it's quite a slick production. Like it starts, and once it starts, there's basically never a loading pause. Like it just goes from scene to scene, fight to fight. Like at the end of every fight, you get a bit of cutscene action, da 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 Unless you fail, then you just have to do the fight again. Um, and it just keeps going. And it's like, uh, there's, there's never a, a sort of stop. There's never a, a cut you away for a second to have to do something. It plays out really uh, in a really slick fashion. It's kind of cool, and the story is actually kind of interesting, you know. Okay, in a kind it, of crazy, done... like comics, all the comics together, kind of uh, yeah, League kind of way. Yeah, they, I mean, they've kind of done the, the classic. Oh, hey, it's another dimension type thing. So well, they had to right. because yeah. they, they wanted to make up some bullshit, and DC didn't want them well, to they, ruin all uh, their franchises. They had to have good <laughs> and bad versions of all the heroes. Yeah, um, not that I imagine that DC has probably done that themselves several times. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's loosely based on one of their newer story threads. Well, it's like Eddie was telling the, me. I don't, I don't know enough about it. Because the classic that. example would have been like the old Bizarro for Superman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, although that was a bit of a weird version even of that. That wasn't just evil, that was like inverse, <laughs> which is a completely different problem. So, so the, the, well, the basic plot of this one is, is that in one universe, the Joker manages to fire a nuke in yeah. Metropolis. Um, well, that's not strictly true. Um, the Joker manages to convince Superman to be a nuke, <laughs> or something. So okay. manages to blow up, uh, uh, manages to blow up Metropolis, da, 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 and inadvertently kills Lois and his son, as you would kind of expect yeah. in a giant explosion. And so he kills the Joker. Yep. Superman kills the Joker. Um, as revenge, and then as a sort of like goes a bit nuts. Basically, yeah. He starts like. Basically, no, not exactly. He just makes the entire thing a dictatorship of Superman, yeah, um, and oppresses the people to protect them. That kind of thing, um, and basically becomes a bit of an arsehole. <laughs> so the entire storyline is that in this other world, the Joker is about to set off a nuke, so that's what it was, oh. and then. As they're uh, all rushing to stop him, something happens and they get transported to this other dimension. We don't... It's basically the opening of Sonic X. <laughs> <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something happens and they're transported elsewhere, and then like confusion ensues as the two people try and figure out, like, wait, what? What's going on? How come there's two of this person? And da -da -da -da. And uh, of course, everyone's a bit confused when the Joker turns up and he's not dead. It's like, what? What? <laughs> And the Joker is clearly the best part of that game. <laughs> yep, <laughs> clearly. Who's playing know, the Joker cool. these days? Like when it's uh, not Mark know. Hamill anymore. Some guy. Yeah, Some he's, he's 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 pretty good at it. He's not Mark Hamill. He's not as good as Mark Hamill, but he he carries most of the same charm. So it's it's fine. It's like when they replaced Sonic. It's like it's not quite as good, but good enough. <laughs> but then again, people cared significantly less about Sonic. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Mark Hamill did an AMA the other day, which is quite hilarious, talking about the Joker mm -hmm. and stuff. It's been some ridiculous AMAs lately. They had Bill, Bill Murray, Murray the other day. <laughs> that was awesome. And they had Arnie again, who's on all the time. The Bill Murray yeah. one was hilarious because the top comment was Snoop Dogg saying, hey, we need to smoke some jazz cigarettes or whatever. <laughs> 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 really... well, he didn't literally say that. He... he just said burn one, I think, or something. But yeah. <laughs> 420, yo. Yeah, 420. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of funny and then there was a story it, yesterday it that, that, that Snoop um, smoked so much weed they called the fire department <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not really. it um, probably would be very difficult he was just visiting a fire department because apparently he wanted to be a fireman when he was a kid okay <laughs> but yeah he probably did smoke quite a, quite a bit with them if, if you went to a fire department, could you go there to smoke? Because then you're in the right place if something happens. Yeah, that's probably what he's thinking. <laughs> like, like, yeah. It's the classic question of like, do fire departments have fire alarms? <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. if something sets on fire inside the fire department building? So they all just get in the truck and drive off. <laughs> is it is the same like alarm? A, is that like a Velociraptor type, type thing? Yeah, I guess so. 
<laughs> Done. Is that all the games you played? Well, it depends if you want to talk about the the playing the game of holiday. Oh, no. I was on holiday. So you did play games is basically what you're saying. <laughs> but I managed to get a lot of little bits of games. In. Let's put it this way. I didn't play anything for like any significant length of time, but I got a lot of little game, little bits of game playing. Right. Um, I didn't play any games. I actually, I was quite proud of myself. Well, I don't know if proud's the right word. Surprised with myself <laughs> that over the course of the five days of being at Centre Parks, I didn't play a single game. Not one. Not even on my iPad. <laughs> Archery, yeah, not I'm okay. I didn't play a single <laughs> video game. We did archery, which is a real game. It's an <laughs> IRL. Nice. Um, Sounds cool. How did you get uh, on with I, that archery? I mean, uh, I got whooped. Um, <laughs> that was the only reason they just brought that up because she wanted Rob to say that he lost. <laughs> yeah, she she kicked my ass basically. Um, did she I think I more? scored thirty two, and she in total. And she scored 101. <laughs> and but my target, I, I I have to maintain my manliness here. My target was about twice the distance away. Well, so you still should have scored 50. Uh, yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know what the difficulty scale square. is. Surely, in yeah. square. I don't know what the difficulty scale is, but yeah. <laughs> don't you think the difficulty squares with the distance. Well, presumably Rob had a bow that was better for that distance. Oh, like, it okay. had a better draw or whatever, or heavier draw, or whatever the fuck they call it. They're all the same. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, no, I don't know. Because he sort of, he did pick out a bow for each, everyone. Right. Um, so well, presumably know. they still have to do that regardless of the range, just for, like, different strength. I guess, yeah, or arm width, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. I'm not arm width, arm span. <laughs> like I've got really super thick arms. Like, like especially if you had really thick arms, you might have to do something special because otherwise all the arrows would be like clipping off your biceps. All the I mean, time. I, yeah, that's the trick. You're supposed to like tilt your arm a little. Well, you, they have arm guards in actual. Yeah, yeah, but even if you hold it straight, then the thing just goes right across and then just hits the uh, hits the guard as one person kept doing. It was very <laughs> funny because it was just like ow, ow, great. <laughs> yeah. It was very funny. But Gnome wasn't smug enough to stop me from winning at the game of engagement. Oh! Oh! Wow, that's exciting. <laughs> I'm trying to decide whether, whether, whether that would be a good thing or not. It's like... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> engagement? <laughs> nice. <laughs> the smugness related to winning in the uh, engagement. Oh, could have put me off. <laughs> So you won, you won that game, I take it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> nice. Congrats. Although, in fairness, that does mean I'm out of pocket quite a lot. I don't know if it doesn't feel like winning that way. <laughs> Not a monetary pound. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I'm, I am now officially betrothed. Betrothed. How exciting. Wait, is that, isn't that only after you're married? You become betrothed in, on engagement? I yeah, I think know. so. Uh, I think it. I think, I'm not sure. I think Rob's right. right. Is it there? But no, which way around is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody knows. Okay. Yeah. Nobody Do you knows. Want to look this up. Maybe not. No, no. I, don't. I don't want to be proven wrong again. Yeah, Rob doesn't want his <laughs> words to be fucked up some more. <laughs> I, like, I like my language how it is. <laughs> it's funnier. <laughs> well, it's only funnier if someone calls you out for it, though. <laughs> Not necessarily. I'm having more fun speaking in the way that I like to speak. Okay. <laughs> yes. Rubisms. So have you got any plans for the next part of that game? <laughs> no. <laughs> the expensive part? Well, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm done with it at this point. All right, <laughs> yeah, that's like, done. Okay. <laughs> now you just sit back and relax. You just have to turn up one day. <laughs> yeah. It's like you S rank the first level and you're like, yeah, okay. That's <laughs> awful. <laughs> No, I'm saying I don't know why you two are laughing. You will have a job. <laughs> I can't wait for Zach's best man speech. That'd be awesome, or or, or Riggs or whoever it is. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've had to. I've been. Yeah, I have Rob has problems with that aspect. I can imagine <laughs> and the choices. <laughs> I don't think any. I don't think any one. Let me put this in different. I don't think any one choice is going to be a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think because like I don't know. I don't think Kippers would 
be asked. <laughs> I think he'd wing it and do something terrible, just going, hey, everyone, thanks for coming. Isn't it great? Yeah, good, right, where's the food? Um, <laughs> Jay might be a little over the top. Yeah, he's like the opposite. <laughs> Jay would do it mega style, yeah. Um, I don't know, Dan might be, the, you're probably the best bet for writing a reasonable speech <laughs> for that occasion. Oh, God, okay. <laughs> oh, that and be good, Zach, though. well, that's Zach that standing really in public. I wouldn't have any idea what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> basically the answer to that. <laughs> that would be awesome, <laughs> come on. Oh man! Uh, I'm I'm highly tempted at this point to uh, just say all four of you go <laughs> sort something. Okay, that well. would probably be bad as well. But yeah, just well, no, that, that, that would just result in Jay doing it because no one else would be organised enough to be, sort out a comparison mm. or compromise. Uh, is that an acceptable risk? <laughs> Anyway, yeah. there's many other things to, to concern yourself about other than the goddamn best man speech for probably last five minutes. <laughs> yeah, like what hat? Yeah, exactly. What hat? You'll have for, to wear the hat. The fedora? Hat. Well, a, tough. a wedding fedora? <laughs> tough hat. Just wear your a one hat. hat. Get no. some use out of it. <laughs> no, it's got to be a special hat. No. A top hat. Yeah, one time use hat yeah. before it expires and explodes. <laughs> you can decorate it. Decorate the one hat. <laughs> You can prove it. I'm going to decorate the one hat, as you keep calling it, in gold with an elfish description on it or whatever. Is, I don't even know. Is it elvish or? For what? Oh, for the, the ring. The I see ring. what you mean. Yeah. I get it now. The one hat. <laughs> you can have a modest pile of hats. <laughs> no, I'm not so good. <laughs> okay, fair you maybe, to, I, Would you maybe, have to ruin all of the hats by putting some sort of stake through them? No, for zero, I was just thinking about it. You probably could do it if you just used hat pins to attach the hats to each other. <laughs> like you'd use hat pins to attach a hat yeah. to your hair. Ingenious. Because <laughs> mm. then they're designed for hats, clearly, because they call it hat pins. <laughs> hat pins. <laughs> and therefore they can't ruin hats. <laughs> But that would still be super unstable, even with the pins. You probably would need some other kind of reinforcement. <laughs> just sew them all together, it'll be fine. And then you can just pluck the sewing out afterwards, it'll be fine. Yeah, is, is that maybe the tactic that if I'm wearing enough hats, that if one falls off, it doesn't matter, there's plenty of other hats. <laughs> just leave a trail of hats. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know how to get out of the church then. <laughs> just follow the hat trail. No, you should just get a, like... <laughs> I'm not sure it would even be possible. You should just buy, like... A ton of hats that are all very slightly smaller than each other and just take one off occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> they'd have to be the same kind of hats so they'd all fit perfectly inside each other and then they'd just be like different colours or whatever. Yeah, just get a collection of top hats and just go zoop. <laughs> <laughs> this is the entrance hat. <laughs> okay. And though each one just has like a word written on the side of it, like <laughs> this is like walk down the aisle, and then you get there and it's like take it off, and then it just says vows, <laughs> <laughs> vows. I'm like subtitling my own ceremony with my hat, the vows hat. <laughs> it's the ultimate hat. And you've got ring hat, and there's like a ring sellotape to it. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Oh, there's that more. <laughs> coming oh, there's soon. more. I'm, I'm coming. Do you know? What, do you know? Have any any idea when? Like what year? Oh, God, pro- probably next year. I reckon. Okay, next like, year. Cool. We reckon it's going to take time to get get it all planned and pro- yeah. or, importantly, get someone to pay for it. <laughs> yeah, that's the key part. Yeah, isn't it the dad of the the the, the woman, <laughs> right? If only. Well, and yeah, by tradition. Yeah. Yeah, no, anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's that. Happy fun times. News. <laughs> News. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't break that out earlier. No, I yeah, I forgot. Got, you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I, no. I knew that was the reason. And I was just waiting to hear it. <laughs> oh, genius. I need to get you a ring so you can remember it. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need a ring to remember. <laughs> uh, Have you not got yourself you one? <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't got an engagement ring. I don't know what the rules of engagement are. <laughs> the rules of engagement. <laughs> Smooth. And the name's going, no. <laughs> no. Just wear an onion ring. The classic. Well, excellent. It won't last very long. Though. No, that's pretty, <laughs> You have to keep replenishing them. New ones all the time. <laughs> Unless you get big enough onion rings, you can just take it off like outer layer, 
<laughs> like a literal <laughs> onion just stuck to your finger and it's like oh peel a bit off I'm hungry I'm wrong <laughs> I'm wrong oh. <laughs> tried to kiss my fiance I'm <laughs> wrong <nom>, <laughs> I have my onion finger <laughs> <laughs> oh dear you've cut into Zach's time quite severely here you realise that's fine <laughs> Oh man! So we've only been going an hour forty. We've still got another like half hour, <laughs> at least. Yeah, we got yeah. half hour. I guess, I guess that's my cue, is it? Yes, yes. I guess right, so. Right, Unless... I'm out. Okay, I'm out. Well, I suppose we could both talk yeah. about because I don't think did we did we talk about playing YDKJ? No, maybe because well, there's exactly, we... not much to say about it, is there? No, not exactly. No. But you know, Zach and I played. We've we've known some rounds of you and know, other people and other people, yeah. And you know, me at Jack. one point. Um, yeah, and Dan. Oh, you, you were there. Yeah. We got an imported version of it because it never came out in Europe. It only came out in America, so we always fail at American questions and have to just guess how many pairs of defensive sweats are fucking we know. <laughs> yeah. I got that one right though somehow. <laughs> yeah. <I don't... laughs> oh. oh man. Yeah, it's good. Say, it's pretty great. Yeah. yeah yep, it's pretty it good. If only uh, they'd made it for Europe. Sure. Yeah, if only. I kind of want to play more. Yeah. Oh, well. We may never see it again. I don't know, THQ. But there's enough publishing. like episodes in there that we can keep playing it for a while, right? You, oh, you, yeah, guys, yeah. you guys aren't like... <laughs> We're not stealing them all. Right, okay. No. I think we've only got through like 10, maybe. Or not even that, probably. I think we might have done 10. Might have done 10. Yeah, and there's like 74 or something. But we can't get any of the DLC. Boo. No. So we can't get extras. No, yeah, none of the DLC is available in this country. Unless I set up a American PSN account somehow. Yeah. So now, now I'm fully done. <laughs> okay. Unless we want to talk Guild Wars. Um, there's not much to say about that either. We played okay. a little tiny bit of it and we haven't for a while. And that's yeah. a bit. That's about it. Another one of my little tiny bits of game. <laughs> A scatter shot of games. There's... We were trying to actually not do whatever event is on at the moment. Well, it was still the Christmas event when we were doing it, like a couple, like last week. It was the day before. Week. Yeah, yeah, it was the day before. Oh, well, I guess it was Monday. <laughs> the day before they got rid of the Christmas stuff, so the Christmas stuff had been hanging around extra long because obviously mm-hmm. they they didn't want to do updates over Christmas, <laughs> which you know makes sense. So we were like, maybe we should try and get through our actual story. We have still got quite a long way to go on that, but yeah, we we keep getting distracted by other by the other stuff that happens in Guild Wars. Yeah, and it's getting well as you as you warn that may become a bit of a increasing problem as we enter Brownland. Well, I think it's the Brownland. <laughs> my job is basically to scout it. I I know what the updates are and then determine whether they're worth doing the actual updates with right, you yeah. or whether we should just carry on with our story. <laughs> hmm. I think the next one probably will be because it's like meant to be the end of the first season or whatever of living story that they've been doing yeah. with Stupid Scarlet and the Marionette kind of boss. I'm Sounds sure that's going to be bonkers. dumb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a given. Well, I, it's like they made like the Marionette boss where it's like this giant fucking 50 foot goddamn puppet that had, somehow has strings coming out of the sky from somewhere. Mm. But then like the other boss for that expression is just another one of those fucking giant worms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, they got lazy on the second half. Yeah. So, but, yeah. The, but this is only the beginning of the end, isn't it? Really? Well, yeah. Well, I, I, that's probably just they're splitting up like they did with the Tower where it's like, here's the staff of the tower, and now here, now you can get into the tower, and now the tower hangs around for the next update. <laughs> right. It's probably not actually going to take more than two, probably. Yeah, probably right. <laughs> if that. Depends. I haven't actually seen any of this new one yet. I don't know if I even will. I probably should, because there's probably going to be good... <laughs> well, if, if it's like any of the other ones that have been leading up to it, there's probably going to be good loot again when mm. masses of people are just grinding those... Like the first clockwork invasion. Oh, yeah. Where it's just like, the whole area, everyone, run, murder the legendaries and get so much goddamn loot. Mm. <laughs> For like half a... Well, it's long than that. like 45 minutes or something that time, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's quite, quite a long time. <laughs> you just run around and loot a million tons of shit. I'm going to actually let you talk about what you want to talk about while I disappear for a drink temporarily because my throat is about to give. <laughs> okay. Run. <Rather> than... <laughs> You're kind of the one that I need to talk to most of the time. Because <laughs> although Dan is here being the host, sometimes yes. he doesn't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> well, explain whereas, it to me. <laughs> whereas Rob has some clues. So what else did I do? 
Um, oh, wait, it's time for the return of everyone's favourite section of this podcast. Okay. What I haven't been playing. <laughs> what hasn't what Zach ha- been playing? <laughs> what I haven't been playing is, well, I suppose this is all half and half what I have and what I haven't. I finished the demo of Bravely Default. Okay. I cleared out everything you can do in that demo because it's like the demo is actually specific demo content. So it's not like just part of the game. Okay. So I so I cleared out everything you can do in that and then that theoretically gives you bonuses for the for something, you know, for the start of the full game. And I was like, well maybe maybe I should get this cuz I still keep seeing people going on about how how it's like it's the best Final Fantasy game I've ever played. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's a big yeah. wave, isn't it? Well, it, it depends well, what they've played, doesn't it, I suppose? Well, I was also trying to determine exactly how ironic they were being. Because it's like, okay. it's not a Final Fantasy game, it's just, it plays exactly like a Final Fantasy game. And they're saying it's the best Final Fantasy game, but is that just disparaging towards Final Fantasy? <laughs> Maybe they just don't know Final Fantasy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not entirely sure whether, like, how ironic those statements are, but... So I was like, yeah, maybe I should just fucking get this. But the yeah. reason I haven't been playing it is because I put in an order on Amazon to get it. Yeah. And and I hadn't done an Amazon order since, like, last year when my card expired. So I put okay. in my new card, and I was like, okay, new card, put, enter all the info. And I was like, wait, wasn't there meant to be a screen come up at some point where I was meant to put in, like, the security code and, you know, maybe some more info than just the number and the name? I don't know. I don't know how this works any longer, how secure is secure and all this stuff. Okay. And sure enough, sure enough, like the next day, Amazon sent me an email which was like, we can't process your order. And I'm like, well, yeah, because you didn't fucking you did ask not the security see it, code. Yeah. <laughs> That's really so weird. I was like, well, did so it, I'm had like, it well, like what's... saved your card information or whatever from, from like yeah. a year ago? And then well, it, it, didn't it, it saved the old cards and then I put in this new card. But it didn't ask is, for the code on the back. It did, yeah, it didn't ask for the security code or anything. And I was like, well, that's weird, surely. Hmm. But then, so that so I got, like, an email a day for a couple of days where I was like, we can't process your order. And I just go to it, look at the order, be like, well, that's right. <laughs> just enter that credit card again. Keep trying, you idiots. Yeah, just give it another go. And then, so then, then on the third day, I was like, well, it's clearly not working because they're just sending me this email over and over. So I cancelled the order, recreated the order on Friday. So it obviously, it can't have actually happened yet. Recreated the order, and this time it went through. <laughs> and they still didn't ask and for the code. Ha- wow. And I was like, what the fuck even happened? How long do they? Surely they need the security code because that's like security. Is it for an actual credit credit card or no? Is it's it a debit debit card, right? Yeah. So that is technically needs less security, I suppose, but. It's not like on Steam I still have to put the security code in. And I've yeah. used that card on Steam since I got it. So that mm. security code works, <laughs> I guess. So I don't know. But now it works, apparently. So I'll get bravely default probably sometime early next week. My bank has six days to send me my new card. Before your card expires. Mm. <laughs> I got I, mine well early. I got like, mine like a whole month before my card expired. And I was like, do I just chuck this other one away now? Or do I keep using it? See, I rang them about it. And apparently they said like it's... It could take 10 to 11 days to arrive from when we sent it. And it's like, so when did you send it? Like a day ago. <laughs> and it's like, great. So you're, you're planning for it to arrive on the 30th. <laughs> right. Like, yep. Well, they were, planning, they were planning for precise timing. Yeah. Basically. Not a good idea. So yeah, that was my Amazon. Not, that was why I wasn't playing Grave Default. <laughs> Okay. Been playing. And also in the category of sort of things I haven't been playing. <laughs> the most important game. Yeah, exactly. This is a whole section <laughs> of the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Zach hasn't sort of vaguely not been playing. Well, this is another half and half one where I also sort of haven't been playing Starbound. I've been modding it. Ah. I've been making mods, writing my own shit. This is awesome. We, so what was the progress? Did we talk about this a little last week? I talked to you about it. Oh, right. I don't think I talked about last it. Last podcast. And maybe... We might have talked about my first mod on the yeah, I think podcast, we did. but I've yeah. made subsequent ones okay. where I got better. All right, I guess. guess. Have you had, what's, what's or, 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 or maybe I was just trying to do easier things. <laughs> okay. Or some, or maybe you, I, you, maybe you no, talked about the like uh, oxygen liquid. Yeah, the oxygen yeah. water. Yeah. It's like maybe now this time I was trying to do something that was actually possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> Rather than trying to make a dumb hack. <laughs> so this time I was trying to make basically wires... Because there's a wiring system that exists in the game, but it's not. It's there's no complexity to it. It's like you attach a switch by a virtual cable to a thing, and then when you hit the thing, it just toggles. Right. And you don't. 
There's no actual cabling involved. It's just this thing is attached to this thing. Okay, right. So, so I was like, well, that's kind of poopy. I want proper cables. <laughs> I want square. My- I want to make Minecraft in. <laughs> want to rip off Minecraft in. You want Starman. redstone? Yeah, or 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 industrial craft or whatever. Mm. I want actual physical square by square cables. Yeah, and then the trouble with that is really as soon as I almost sort of even before I started writing it, I I realized that in the way you have to write it at the moment because you know you're basically trying to build a system that, that could probably could be implemented a lot easier way but you're trying to work in the confines of what is already implemented mm. so i was like well the way i'm gonna to have to write this is basically every cable is going to have to be running a script that updates constantly and that's just going, that's not a good oh, no that's yeah. not a good way to do things really that's just like the more cables you have the more lag you'll get <laughs> yeah because <laughs> everything slower, will be updating yeah. but i did it I wrote a whole wrote, wrote the whole fucking programming for cables where it's like you attack every. It's still not a very efficient way of doing it because obviously I'm not very good at it. But it's like every time something changes next to a cable, it it it's basically tells itself that it has to reset, and then okay. that reset command propagates along all the other cables. Okay, cool. With a timestamp, yeah, and then it only pays attention to what the most recent thing is. So it's like if there's a reset that's more recent than the la- than a power flow that's trying to come along, mm. it says no, that power flow can't get through. We're in the middle of a reset, <laughs> right? And then it's not really a power flow either. It's like it's more of a toggle, isn't it? Well, it's well, no, because now I've implemented power flow, right? <laughs> Where it's like the the battery sends out. It's not really a power flow. The the output end of the cable, like the thing that's trying to use power, sends out a query basically along the cables to see if there's any inputs. And then when it finds an input, it just talks to the input directly rather than sending anything along the cables. Mm. And then when the cable send reset, that causes the battery to be like, oh shit, I might have been disconnected. I'll send out my pulse again. Okay, gotcha. So it's not a very efficient system at all in any way, but it works more or less. Like I could have a solar panel that charges the battery. And then when it actually is charged, you can use that to fuel your ship by shoving a battery into the fuel bay <laughs> where you normally shove coal. <laughs> it's not exactly realistic, but it works pretty yeah, good. It sounds kind of cool. Yeah, so I made that. There are like other mods that do. Do you put it up then? If people yeah, I put, it. I put it up, and several people have downloaded it and set, started a discussion about how I'm terrible at programming. Not really. <laughs> One guy was like, "You're doing pretty good, actually," mm. and I was like. Yep, apart from the bit where I kept leaving debug spam in the logs. <laughs> but like, I, I, cause I, I finally found a debug option where it's like you can output, you can output yeah. basically a string to a log file. Yeah, and I was like, so you can see what was going on. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but then, but then, so I use that, I use that fucking tons, and then I keep uploading and forgetting to comment it all out. So everyone's debug log just gets spammed <laughs> <laughs> with millions of lines. Or not millions, tons of lines, and it's like I probably should turn that off because that's creating lag and creating a file that keeps increasing Getting in bigger, size. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's my you... main. That's my main re-release issue. Is it what? But, what's the code again? Because uh, you, you said it was uh, Lua. Yeah. Lua. Yeah. Well, maybe there's a logging like library that should be built in because then you can set different debug levels and you could have files that have limits and don't go. Well, over it's it. just that like I. Like I said last time, there's there's code that you can use to like draw debug lines in the world and stuff, but you can't access it. It's like you you can't oh, right. turn debug mode on in order to be able to see that stuff. Okay, so you have to. Whereas the log file at least always writes regardless. Okay, that's true. Do you have to look at the log file afterwards? Or are you like tailing it in a window? No, like, you have on to. You monitor? have to look afterwards. It doesn't oh, actually right. write it until the program closes. Yeah, it doesn't. So maybe there's a a way of like you being able to import external libraries into your law script i think there probably is because i think people have done it but i am i wouldn't even i wouldn't even try to do that because i probably fucked that up really bad (laughs) (laughs) it sounds like there's there's a like there's other mods that do sort of similar things to what i was trying to do there's one which there's one which uses the virtual cable system to transmit info because i couldn't i couldn't get that to work when i tried it i could only get it to toggle on or off Mm. But someone has managed to get it so that it actually sends like numeric data along those connections, mm. which is okay. But I still don't like the idea of virtual cables. I still mm. think tile by tile yeah. is like more legit. <laughs> Do you the, is the tiling in Starbound small enough that you could run like enough cables around around it, taking up a room of stuff? What well, hmm, probably because they, like the tiles are quite small, so you could mm. probably like fit several bits of cable running into different machines. Are your or walls whatever. just going to become? Well, yeah. I mean, the trouble with that is, like... Or do you you run them all outside the building? (laughs) That's not how that works. (laughs) 
You have to build like a special face outside the outside the building just for your cabling. Yeah, like that is well, in, especially my my way at the moment because they attach to the background mm. rather than being a solid object. Or have it have big spacing between floors where you can run stuff under the floorboards. I was thinking about maybe you could do it like more efficiently by making it so that you only place cables at the corners or junctions, and then they just scan the blocks away from them to see if there's another cable. Mm. That might not actually be more efficient because it's having to do a block-by-block block scan rather than just the adjacent blocks. But then you're using less cables per length of cable, I guess. True. I don't know. There's probably ways... And then there's another mod that I saw that does a similar block-by-block mm. block thing only for liquids. Mm. And I was like, I don't want to look at the code for that because I'm writing this myself. And I want to see if I can do it. And then I did. So it was okay. Hey. And then I made another very small mod just very quickly to make like a, a scanning device that illuminates rocks. Because the worst thing in like Terraria and Starbound and Minecraft, I guess, is when you, you're going down like a natural cave yeah. and you just come to a dead end. And then you're like, well, which way do I, do, I mi- do I try and mine through a wall and hope there's another natural cave? Otherwise, I might just be mining forever and that's really slow. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, because you actually want to be in the natural caves because then you can just look like oh look there's some convenient ores in the wall and I can just mine that and then mm. I can just run down this cave and it's much quicker than just having to mine through solid rock so I just made like a little scanner device that you place down and then it illuminates all the rocks in the vicinity and by illuminating the rocks it illuminates the empty spaces as well oh I see so you can tell <laughs> which direction mine to, to yeah. mine to yeah. yeah yeah it just gives you a clue so when you say illuminate it just use the inbuilt lighting engine yeah so, okay that's kind of cool do you have to zoom I out thought... to see like where, like you know, in where in the distance the actual next hollow cave is? Or, or well, it doesn't or... really go that far. It okay, goes so like only the goes... width. Oh, okay, mainly because so... it mainly because that's a limit of like how many how many <coughs> particles I can spawn simultaneously without it lagging the fuck up. Right, because <laughs> it's bas- it's basically scanning along a line, seeing which of those blocks are solid, and then spawning a particle that creates light on every one of those squares. And then moving the line and then scanning again, <laughs> only faster. Is that the only way the lighting works? Yeah, because I can find a way to just create lights or a whatever. It lights. has to create yeah. a particle that has a light attached to it, right? And then that particle destroys after a second or whatever. Yeah, I guess that maybe that conflicts with how the lighting normally works in that game. Like, so if you're in like an area of light, that's used to like light the ca- insides of the caverns. Yeah. You know I mean, so maybe there's ways of doing like geometry lighting. Like, yeah, say, exactly. Draw, draw from here to here for the inside, but you can't do that across rock because it's like, well, that's the end of where the light should go. Yeah, that's because it's, it's like, like originally, you, it's like that's how a torch works. It's like it's stopped by rock mm. rather than illuminating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had to work around that. And I was trying to see if there's any way you could make it so that you could have it be a handheld device. But could you make it like a pulse? Is. Like a like, little like, well, that's good. almost what I did. It's mm. basically four lines that rotate a quarter of the angle. Okay, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So, so sort of you get this nice light sweep. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> it's not. I could, it's like, that was the other trouble. It's like, I thought about making it cooler where the light would fade out gradually. Yeah. But then you just have to make more particles of a different colour. <laughs> so no, that's not actually, that's just going to make it lag more. True. Yeah. So yeah, it's kind of limited. But I got it working that as well so I just uploaded that as like a tiny mod by itself and I couldn't make it a handheld item because there's no way it's like items in your hand can't run scripts and that's how you do the scanning and the positioning of particles is by running a script yeah so you had to make it a physical object you might be able to do it with a gun that like shoots invisible particles that have a light attached to them really (laughs) really fast or something okay yeah but I'm not sure whether there's a sort of just became yeah basically it's like there's a tag in projectiles for penetrating, and I'm not sure whether that means penetrate everything or just penetrate enemies. Right. I haven't actually tested that yet. <laughs> yeah. Cool variant, though. Yeah. So there you go. That's my modding in Starbound that I haven't really been playing. I've just been modding and then adding a load of time to my clock because I because it's got a launcher. So it just runs the launcher, and I leave that open and then just launch Starbound every time I need to go in and check something. <laughs> right. So the launcher runs for hours and adds a <laughs> load of time to my clock. <laughs> In your Steam clock is affected yeah, by the clock. by the launcher. <laughs> That's crazy. So there you go. That was Starbound, and I did I did like a lot of that, and that really fucked up my sleeping as well. <laughs> I should keep. I was like, I keep coding until like three o'clock, and then like, oh shit, I need to go to bed now. But I'm still thinking about stuff. Fuck. Yeah, yeah that's how it works. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the danger of late night coding. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like that would be a problem if I 
if it was a job, like well, doing that, normal yeah. daytime hours. <laughs> well, no, I, I found that with my contracty stuff. You know, if I got into, I kind of wanted to always get things done to a point where I was happy to stop. But finding yeah. that point is sometimes really hard. Yeah, if, especially if shit isn't doing what you want it to do, and you might not remember what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. it takes time to get back into page everything back into memory for for, for working on it. <laughs> that was that, and then. That's why I don't do it if I can help it because yeah. it, it screws with my sleep real bad. I was trying to remember if there was anything I've actually played because it's surprising. That it's like for a change, I won't play anything. I do that. It's like a week ago, like before I started doing all this again. There was a there was a short time where I started playing Pokemon again, actual Pokemon, not Mystery Dungeon or whatever. Because, well, I. At first, I went back into it because I was like, okay, fuck that goddamn shiny that I never got. <laughs> I just want to breed some more normal stuff and, like, you know, go Pokedex completion or whatever. Mm. Just breed some things in order to train them up and then evolve them and fill in the blanks of the Pokedex or whatever. So I started doing that again. And then, sort of halfway through the week, I was like, wait, hang on a minute. Wasn't there meant to be that Pokemon Bank app thing that came out, that was meant to come out so you yeah, can yeah. the Pokemon to the internet? That's right. And the answer, the answer to that is it was supposed to, but it never came out. Because <laughs> they like really? released it in Japan. They released it in Japan in December sometime, and then the server immediately crashed because of how much load there was. So they were like, okay, I guess we can't release this in the rest of the world, and we're going to have to take down the Japan one. Yeah. So it hasn't come, they haven't released it yet, still. Which is a shame. Because for the first time ever, I'm in a position where I can actually transfer Pokemon from old games. Because I have my old DS and the 3DS, and the, surprisingly, I didn't think this was going to work, but surprisingly, if you shove a, a regular DS game into the 3DS, it recognizes the 3DS as a DSi and can still use all the wireless features. Mm. Right. So, so, if you, so I have my old DS and my 3DS, which means mm. I can put like Diamond and Pearl in my old DS and Black in the new one, transfer from Pearl to Black, and then theoretically when the Pokemon Box application comes out, I could just have black in the system and use the box app on the 3DS to put them into the box, then switch to Y and bring them from the box into into Y. Okay. What did I say? <laughs> anyway, I can get <laughs> I can get stuff from Pearl and Black into X and Y, so I can bring all my up basically two whole games worth of old Pokemon up, <laughs> which is pretty sweet. Mm. But that app isn't out yet, so I can't. <laughs> Is that going to be literally like a one at a time transfer? As no, it does it by like box, boxes, so it's like 32 at once. Okay. At least. I think when you are at the stage of, well, that's not strictly true. Transferring from Pearl to Black, you have to play a mini game and you can do six at once. And then. You have to play a mini game? Yeah. A dumb, like, just shoot the icons of your Pokemon. <laughs> Okay. Like a little catapult. It is actually like you drag the catapult back to change the power and fire the Pokemon. It's just their way of mitigating like cloning problems that they've always had. Or maybe well no, I don't think cloning is to do with in game. I think cloning was more to do with editing the files directly than Yeah. Than... <laughs> All the weird fit the flags way. and stuff that make up the yeah. Pokemon. Yeah, it was, that was the cable trick, wasn't it? The yeah. old ones. The old classics. Well you pull it out at just the right moment, right? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the mini game is more to do with like. Actually, I don't really know. I think it was just to like give you something to do, or batch it. I don't know. Basically, what it, it's a it's one of the very few times it's actually used the DS's download play feature, hmm. where it basically sends a demo. But apart from it, the demo is that mini game onto the other DS, and then right. can access the Pokemon files from the cartridge and tell the other one what it's got. Right. So you transfer you transfer those over six at a time, and then theoretically, when the app comes out, you can just look at the file of black and just move whole boxes like thirty two at a time, mm. or or all of them basically mm. into the cloud storage, and then just put them down into Y in the same way. Okay, so it's not too much faff. <laughs> no, <laughs> but you know, but a reasonable amount of faff. <laughs> it's some faff, but not as much as if you wanted to go any further back than that. Yeah, if you wanted to get into a, the Game Boy Advance or original Game Boy games, well, as I sort of said, yeah, when we were talking about it before, it's like it's a weird sort of meta game that it is in itself kind of interesting. Like, can someone go like? <laughs> we, it's kind of almost interesting enough and therefore worth it to just see if you can get like the get the original version of Pokemon Red or something. Yeah, and, and then, them all the way out and get something to come all the way. Yeah, yeah, that is kind of cool in its own way. I mean, it, it must be possible, right? Well, it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. 
sort it's, it's less possible well i don't know if it's less possible they sort of re-enabled a different way to do it when they re-released the original games as Game Boy Advance games. Like they re- uh, when they made Fire Red or whatever, right. which was a Game Boy Advance version of the first game, mm. that sort of bypassed the first two steps <laughs> of having to go through Red into Silver and then up to the up to an advanced one from the original Game Boy. Mm. But you could do that, surely. I mean, every did step need, of the way, you they must have... An... You know, there's no broken chain, right? So no. presumably, it's possible uh, all I mean, the way. There's always cases where it's like they won't let you bring certain Pokemon or if a Pokemon has learned a certain move, it can't go because that right. move changed in the future. Or yeah. whatever. There's always conditional stuff. Yeah. But in principle. But yeah, in theory, it works. And it is, it is sort of, in theory, important for like breeding real teams of Pokemon because there's like <laughs> the idea of having moves that are passed on from the parents is like in certain cases, there's moves that the parents could only have if they'd come from a previous game. Hmm. So, like, they don't they don't get that move naturally any longer. But if you ported one up, you could still breed that move <laughs> for the next generation. I see. <laughs> Which could give you slightly more weird options, specialized options for building specific teams. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's still Pokemon. Hmm. And that was about it. That was pretty much everything I played. That one game and then a lot of modding. <laughs> How have I ended up playing more than you? <laughs> like, I well, you went on holiday as well. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm in, that, in this phase where I'm not really doing anything big. No. I'm not really playing any long-running games. I, I guess with that week, with that previous week before the modding when I was playing Pokemon, I just like had a sudden hard stop on playing Rears mm. for some reason. I don't know why I should go back to that. I think I was in the middle of a game as well. <laughs> I was trying to work out what if if I should go into something big now. Like, is this the time, or should I play something like Reyes just to so we get the comparative? As, as we said about Reyes, it's still like a you can still commit two hours to that if you want. <laughs> that yeah, time. yeah. Do you know what I mean? But like, a, when I say a long run, like a really long yeah. run, like I don't know something like Far Cry or maybe. Do I? I haven't quite worked out because I had thought about like until I got this copy of Beyond. Like, should I just start Final Fantasy? <laughs> <laughs> we had to save that for our epic sequel to the Final Fantasy VII. Oh no, no, well, not not FF8. Oh. I mean, thirteen two. Oh, that one. Yeah. Okay, baby. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm saving eight. Okay. Like, yeah, it's probably going to be like four more years yeah, till we get to that. We still haven't recorded another video since the last podcast. Yeah, we'll do some more for today. some reason. We we'll do, we'll do some more today. Okay. Commitment. Yeah. Cool. You heard it here. Yeah. How far are you through now? Like a third or something? Well, we're not at 20 hours yet, are we? No. About 15. Yeah. How many so hours in that game? Probably 60. Yeah, because right. <laughs> a quarter. Nice. Depends how much grind we have to do on air. Well, yeah, that is the, that is the main question of Five Houses then. We may have to take some grind out of... Uh, out off of the air. And yeah. how, much, how much, like side stuff we want to do like do we want to get knights of the round just to show it off because that is some effort but if we, just, quite look, a lot of effort. If we just look at a guide you can do that pretty quickly yeah just bringing yeah. the chocolate uh, maybe depends i don't think it's like necessarily an accurate playthrough then like going going off air <laughs> yeah, that is so thing, but... su- that's so side though mm. it's just like that's not affecting our actual playthrough of the game really yeah i don't know I mean, you can if you. I mean, we've, we. I suppose we have looked up. We've set a precedent. We have looked stuff up that we couldn't quite remember. Well, yeah, well, that's because I keep like half remembering things and then be like, "Oh shit, I don't want to miss that." <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I keep thinking there's stuff that I that is important that we missed, but we didn't. We didn't miss it. Uh, we didn't miss Vincent. No. And we didn't miss. Tifa's last minute break. Not that we'll probably even ever get to see that. Nobody misses Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> well, for our playthrough, we certainly wouldn't have missed him. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> kick him. And then, I was about to say kick him out of the party, except now we've got past the bit where he was really <laughs> an impediment. Mm. <laughs> now he might actually be useful again. <laughs> so yeah, that's five thousand seven. <laughs> Very important. I'll be playing Bravely Default. Good times. 
when it when it actually arrives from this Amazon, assuming it has gone through, right? It has no, it has now. It shipped, it or, okay. Yeah, well, it's preparing for shipping. Okay. It, it finally went through the paying process on Friday, but then of course that's Friday. Yeah. <laughs> Not anything going to happen to that till Monday. Probably, I guess. I, yeah, I don't, don't know, know how that. Amazon works on that stuff. So <laughs> well, it certainly won't get delivered until probably Tuesday because it no. won't be in the Royal Mail process for two uh, days. True. I imagine their ship preparation stuff still functions over the weekend yeah, so probably. they can get stuff out Monday morning. Still has to come from wherever it is in the EU, Switzerland or whatever, mm-hmm. where that distribution centre is that we get everything from. Mm-hmm. It sounds like Switzerland. I don't actually know. Well, EU no, I think... Sarl. I think... That the com- that's just the where the um company is registered, it's not where it gets shipped from. They they've right. just registered there to dodge tax, right? Well yeah, naturally. Um because it used to it, they used to all get well it used to get a lot of stuff shipped from uh, Jersey, didn't you? But they closed that yeah. tax loophole now, so that doesn't work anymore. So I think that's yeah, where from... play dot com were based. Yeah, they shut down their whole business, didn't they? Uh, yeah. Well the Sort of, they're still, still really. the, the players still up, but they're not playing anymore. They're like recruiting. No. Yeah, exactly. They were bought by the Japanese, and now they're like a weird marketplace thing that don't. I think it was Russian. I thought it was Russian. No, I, th- I, th- I believe they're Japanese. Although it sounds Russian, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's funny. I think I heard it was Russian. I'm not just going on the sound. That it is. It's a bit like Rasputin, isn't it? I think they that's were, probably what you saw. Rasputin was the company that made base jumpers. Oh, is it true? <laughs> I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that's related to anything. I'm just saying that's, a, that's something called Rasputin. <laughs> okay, it's Rakuten, and it is yeah. Japanese. Okay. Uh, Rob was wrong again. I thought I said it was Rasputin. <laughs> you literally did think, oh, Rasputin, that's clearly... <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> subconsciously. I hadn't made that association until you did. <laughs> okay, fair enough. It was subconscious. Uh, anyway. <laughs> well... I guess we're done and conveniently early today by like two minutes. Okay. Oh, awesome. I don't have anything else to talk so about. Dan hasn't talked about anything. But I, I, <laughs> I naturally assume that Dan hasn't played anything. He I played about Rogue Legacy. Legacy. I played Civilization Five. I played oh, yeah, that's Star. right. I did see log into that for a little bit. Uh, what else did I play? Anyway, yeah. Did you get very far in that game of Civ Five, or was that just like an hour or whatever? No, well, I was just trying the tutorial out, so and then it wouldn't let me save it, but I was like, I need to start a proper game now. Uh, but yeah, okay, it seems like Civ. Well, I wanted well, to see to, if there were new mechanics. You get refreshed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Zach was not... my tutorial, I suppose. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you not play the tutorial every time you get a Civ game? It takes like three hours or something, usually. <laughs> it's important to know. Mm. Well, well, if there's no, I didn't. We just played a multiplayer yeah, game. Yeah, exactly. I just told Rob what to do. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. And then Rob didn't understand half of anything. I still don't Because I'm so great at explaining it. Maybe Rob should play this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, there was, seems like there was. It's not as good a tutorial as in four. Like four no. had a really in depth, awesome one. And, and it, wait, there wasn't another backhanded intelligence check, there was it? Oh, maybe Rob should play the tutorial. <laughs> no, that was self-deprecating because it was like saying that I was bad at teaching. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I like how you called it an intelligence check as well. It's an intelligence check. Roll. Roll a d20 to see if you fail at intelligence. <laughs> that would be much better. <laughs> I, w- I wish. <laughs> oh, dear. Critical hit. <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, they're Russian now. Rob gets a critical hit on intelligence and makes the world how he imagines it. <laughs> Uh, I'm dubbing down reality. <laughs> there you go. Oh shit, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Just used it correctly. I have to say the hex grid thing in, in Civ didn't really... I barely even noticed it. Like, it doesn't make no. much difference. Well, I guess it's because you haven't played for such a long time. <laughs> no, I guess. No, it didn't make a great deal of difference, ultimately. The stacking, I think it's cooler. The stacking but... is the main thing that is yeah, noticeable. Yeah, that is very noticeable, yeah. I don't know how you're supposed to attack now. Like, do you just do you try and get everyone surrounding the city yeah. or whatever? If you're and yeah, then so attack? siege is quite important. You just line you just line everyone as you just pack every square that's at least two squares away from the city with units, and then just try and push everyone in simultaneously so only one of them gets injured at a time. But you do it one. You have to attack one by one, right? So 
once you're all packed. Well, you, I mean, you lead with ranged units, so they knock right. the health off first, and then, right, and then obviously melee to finish the capture. Yeah, right. Well, I tend okay. to try and do like I, I just, I, I tend to wrap the city in melee. Well, yeah, if you can, then, if you can get all the way around it. Yeah, in, exactly. At least as, as, much, of as, as much as you can, but then only attack it with the ranged because the melee just gets hurt. So yeah, much. the melee just takes us so much damage from attacking yeah. cities directly, and then literally right. just only use the melee to finish it do off. the final thing yeah to make sure you got your catapults or whatever yeah yeah siege is actually quite useful yeah so it's, it's all about that now that's kind of cool I've, I've tried to bomb cities before like but that doesn't actually seem that effective with what bombers bombers yeah oh i guess in the late game it <laughs> the cities have sort of ridiculously high values yeah i guess but with bombers, that's a stack again, sort of, because aircraft don't really count as an actual unit. I haven't so quite you can just chuck as many as you want. I haven't quite brought myself to finish that game where I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose now. <laughs> it's, uh... You're abandoning your people. And, uh, well, they're frozen in time. <laughs> I've been thinking of it. That's the actual alarm for the end of this podcast. Apparently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Dan, Dan got his little bit of stuff talking, so we're good. I did. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. We, we, uh, we need to put like a Salacast theme song or one of them on there or something. You'll have to write a special alarm song. Oh, a special alarm song. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna it's time it. to end the podcast. <laughs> make an actual song. <laughs> yeah, just oh, vocate awesome. the, the heck out of it. So it's like podcast <laughs> ending time. <laughs> well, listeners, thanks for joining us for another Salacast number 101. Is that correct? Are we... Uh, it might be two. 102. 102. Oh, sorry. Getting confused there. Oh, well, we're out of room 101 anyway now. So <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> we survived. We survived. <laughs> Without even noticing. 102. Yes, correct. Uh, and uh, join us next time for more, probably more Rogue Legacy again. The best kind of content. The content about the game of the year. Yeah, and uh, really. also other games Starbound will might actually be played or there might be more mods for you to download for Starbound or there might be more there and the return of my favourite or the best section things I haven't played <laughs> yeah. or of that. so it's games I should have played but haven't played of the week and we'll see how Rob gets on with this new engagement game thing uh, part two yeah it's indeed. Be part like two <laughs> <laughs> it's like so- no 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 so yes uh, catch you next time Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.